Golden Triangle. Look, elementary. Man, I'm, I never really talked about it too much, but when I was 14 years old, I ran away from home, man. My big brother was in jail. I didn't feel like uh, dealing with everything that was going on, you know, at home and all around me and stuff. And I had a friend that was turning 17. He had a car and he was from Flower Bluff. And he told me, he said, man, hey, you're fixing to be 15. I'm fixing to be 17. You want to go down there with me? I said, hell yeah. I packed my clothes, got all my little old stuff, got my couple little dollars, some extra little stuff. And I ended up trying to leave and we couldn't go as soon as I thought. I had literally ran away with no place to go, as crazy as that is. But there was a dolphin cat, crackhead that lived in the neighborhood, and I've known him my whole life. So I stayed with a crackhead cat for a couple of days, didn't tell nobody where I was. And about three or four days later, we was in Corpus Christi. It was a trip. But I actually liked it. I stayed down there for a while, for a few years. Oh, you stayed in Dickinson and Bay Cliff, huh? Flagstaff, Arizona. Salute. Man, y'all got some snow? Bro, it was hot. I mean, hot, hot. Uh, so we got we got a little cold front that blew through, but uh, it was uh, damn near in the 80s. That's crazy. Lubbock, Texas. Yeah, Lubbock is uh, kind of far from here, man. I'm down around Galveston, southeast Texas down here. I'm literally probably... Man, uh, 10 minutes from Galveston Island. Man, I've seen a story where a guy went to one of the USPs in the federal prison. And within less than his first 30 days, he was killed. It's real deal in there, y'all. Like we say, it is not the life you want. Seen 11 other people got caught taking drones into the prison federal prison uh another group of inmates got hit with an indictment where they're running a smuggling ring taking massive amounts of methamphetamine to minnesota oh shit Thank you for that, D. Uh, I do remember that. The wood click dropped a kite on him for sn snitching. They're saying they will stab him when he's out of PC. So, you know what, plug? Appreciate that, man. You need to come hop on with me whenever you get ready, now or any other time. So, if they dropped a kite saying they're going to do something to him, did, are you saying they dropped a the kite to the administration or they just sent him a kite to his cell? There's a big difference right there, so I need to know the answer to that before I keep going. ZG, flag staff, New Age Plug, man. Make sure y'all go subscribe to uh, the New Age Plug, man. Be dropping some good content. By nature, a video producer, so you know his YouTube's going to be fire. Yeah, I talked to Zay about two days ago. He'll probably pop in. Zay knows he can always hop in. Rob, what's up, man? Hey, uh, Michael K. Now you ain't lying about that. So listen, I ain't gonna lie. That I just said as I was a, when I was fourteen, I ran away and moved to Corpus. Right, this area right here was highly, highly in 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 deep in the crack epidemic, and it was still going on here. When I moved down there, there was no crack epidemic. They were on a meth epidemic. And I went from seeing crackheads walking around in the neighborhood like really, really fast with somewhere to go to going down there and watching meth heads just walk around slow as hell and be zombies. It was a trip. It was like a whole different ball game. Then nowadays around here, they're on both. So that's a hell of a hell of a thing. They're on heroin, crack, meth, everything around here. No, that's pretty scary, D. I ain't gonna lie. 
that's real scary. Remember what I told you that. So if somebody like does something to you, I know it doesn't sound right and it's not fair or anything like that. But inside of a prison, even if you get cheap shot, sucker punched, hit from behind, jumped on, somebody could, you know, do anything. You're still expected to say you fell out of your bunk or you slipped in a slipped and tripped or fell in the shower you know what i mean and most of the hardcore prisons and laws totally accept that right they won't they won't say anything different hell they'll just take it how it goes because they don't want to ruffle any feathers either so when you really go and say man somebody stomped me out yeah they're gonna say that you were telling you know what i mean i wonder was it a black dude that done it white dude Mexican dude, who who done this to him? Because I know you said he was sleeping. That's what I'm saying. That's that's like one of the most unfair things I ever heard of. But in reality, inside of there, it's an unfair world. You're dealing with people with mental problems, anger issues, all kind of stuff. There's, you know what? Uh, about two days before I caught my Fed case, I was in Rockport and almost went to jail. Would have been the same charge. I'd have just went two days earlier. I was right there where you, oh man, what is it? Come off 35. There's a little gas station 24 7. I pulled up and left my car running and left the door open. And the law came up to me, gave me a long lecture and a long speech. And all I was saying was, Yes, sir, I'm sorry. He said, Man, it's people like you why crime happens. He said, Somebody didn't even plan on stealing a car, gonna walk by and take it. I'm like, my bed off, so I'm just trying to get home, man. Shout out to St. Louis, Missouri. I appreciate that, man. I just came in to tap in tonight to see what's up. Come on. Can you see that? I don't know if you can see it because it's a green screen, right? There you go. No, it's not. I just got back from the Chinese buffet, man. I got my little daughter's five and a half, and she's uh in love with crawfish. This little girl will suck the heads on the crawfish, eat five pounds by herself. It's crazy. Right now, the prices are so high that we've been hitting a little Chinese buffet and letting her eat them. She don't know no difference. Oh, you grew up in Rockport? Yeah, my boy was living in Rockport. He was. Let me see. Man, I have a couple of little funny little clips. I don't know if y'all want to see them. I, I probably won't play them, though. That's that being poor taste, those right there. How about that? We'll try to keep it classy. Marco, what's up? Salute, man. What you sipping on down there? Oh, Rob Johnson. Hey, man, it ain't no big deal, man. I appreciate that, but uh, half these half these YouTubers probably sitting on here doing a live in their underwear. There ain't, nothing, ain't nobody special. You know what I mean? Uh, some of the real gigantic, huge YouTube channels make a whole bunch of money, but they're, everybody's just regular people, hell. National Jones, salute. Angelo, you know, I'm sipping on the Corona, man. I, so I messed with some Dos Equis a little bit, but I don't think I've ever drank Modelo. But in all reality, I like my Corona. And you already know, a gas station cup. Sam, man, what's up, man? Appreciate it. Much love, little bro. Hope everything's good. I'm just tapping in, man. I took my daughter to the trampoline park earlier. Then we went and got the, uh, the uh, Chinese buffet crawfish. Super King, I appreciate it. What's my thoughts on Tyson versus Paul fight? You know what? I fight both of them people at the same time for the right price. I would not give a damn. So I, I don't know. I think Tyson Tyson looked bad ever since Holyfield. He got his he got beat by Lennox Lewis. 
So in all, all in reality, I don't know. Is it even going to be a real fight or is it an exhibition? That's what I still hadn't fit him. Uh, Smokey P, yes. You know what? I talked to Jay the other day. I mean, I hope he don't, but I did do that video. He, he watched it himself, left a comment where he, he pretty much admitted to one of the, you know, the evading. So we hope he don't. Super King, you know what? Uh, I ain't drink right now. I'm on Lent until March 20th. That's, that's what's up, bro. I respect that. I really do. That's, that's uh, actually some real legit shit right there. But boxing, yeah, boxing been fake for a long time. You know what? Uh, Don King. Had everything ready. So, so, so some of it's fake. Hell yeah. But most of it's just picking the proper opponents where they know they're going to win. You know what I mean? Like the guy that's out there, he ain't, ain't too many of them throwing a fight or ducking a fight. But they're predicting, you know, they're picking their opponents wisely, right? No, I have. No, I didn't see it. I did not see that one. A seven month state jail felony. Okay. Uh shit, Rob. You got I don't know. Maybe you got lucky. Maybe you didn't. Depends on how the county is. Our county is our county sucks. Like the only rec yard is this little bitty concrete pin. You go outside with concrete walls and then you can see the roof up there. Might see a bird fly by or something. State jail. It's probably a little wild, but I guess if I had to do seven months, I would always probably pick state jail where I could smoke a cigarette and do whatever I want to. Commissary is a lot cheaper in the state jail TDC. Tyson smokes too much, trips too much. I mean, so, yeah, that's got something to do with it. You know, he said before his Buster Douglas fight when he famously got beat, that and i appreciate that billy thank you shout out to new zealand man that's always uh always trips me out the biggest do you mean like physically or probably like the most powerful i've seen some big ones before real big ones big ass country boys you know what uh whenever i was in beaumont in federal prison in uh beaumont medium the head wood that spoke for the woods on my dorm his name was terry and terry wasn't that tall right but terry was a solid muscle type dude like all he did was burpees push-ups pull-ups you know what i mean all day long and he was he was powerful though yeah there was some big boys though it really was there was a guy over there with us who was a nerd I mean, he almost looked like a chomo. He had the big glasses and funny look to him. He was real square, but he was a damn what? I don't even know how that works. But he was an arm wrestling champion. Champion. What does that mean? You gifted ten Texas Prison Story memberships. Wow, look at that. So I had to figure that out, right? I don't know if I get to pick the ten or. Somebody else picked them. Yeah, that's the MVP right there. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. You know, uh, so you know me. I've been through a bunch of phases. What's up, big homie? Look, they just asked who's the biggest wood that I ever seen, right? That's my bro right there who's the biggest white boy I ever seen, but he's not a wood, right? Me and Mike. Me and Mike talk all the time. He did his time in Idaho. He said he was in an all all white tank, basically a couple Mexicans, like four black dudes, and he was with them. And he said it was kind of strange at first, but he's six foot seven, probably three hundred fifty pounds, big X tackle. So nobody's gonna say too much to him, right? It distributes randomly. Well, that's cool. Yeah, y'all hit the like button. So if you're watching this, hit them three 
three dots on the top right corner if you're watching on YouTube. White boy Jesse. What's up, homie? Much love, man. Yeah, I'm just tapping in. You, you know, sometimes I do these lives, man, where I don't got nothing going on. I just wanted to talk to the people see, and get a bunch of love from everybody. Them trolls been vicious, Jesse. I'm talking about, man, like crazy, dog. It's 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 amazing. It's usually always the SPM fans, man. I don't know what it is about that dude that, like, magnetizing people. You know what I mean? Prison boxing. Uh, you know what? So I don't know. In Texas, yes, yeah, it's, it's a thing of the past. They would have boxing gloves on the on the sale box back in the day. But maybe in a, some other states. Billy Nile, yeah, 67350. Ex college football player, ex semi pro football player. That'll probably grab you, grab each arm and pull them off your body type shit. But now nah, he was riding with the blacks. Because, listen, he's from Southside Houston. He went to jail with gold teeth and wearing some Jordans and a pair of Versace glasses on his face. You know what I mean? So, yeah, he was just, he said in our reality, he didn't plan on riding with anybody. But when he walked into jail, the couple people he recognized was black. So it was just natural. Once he already was talking with him and sitting with him, it's too late anyway. Son of a legend, salute, man. Everything's good, man. I appreciate all the love. Uh, this one was the coolest one ever, right there. I've never even seen that before, man. So that's really dope. It really is. Oh, uh, I'm fixing to update the emojis too. Yeah, there was some Sudanios in, in Beaumont in the federal prison. Uh, there wasn't a lot of them. It was probably on uh, man on my wing, probably two. The one actually that I only remember one, maybe two. On the whole prison, they would all go to wreck at the same time. You would see 30, maybe 40, I doubt it, probably 30. Yeah, you know what? Uh, in Galveston County, we always had the same commissary man. They called him. He ran the commissary, and I think it was like a independent contract or something that he had going on. But I'm gonna tell you something. That dude was a that dude was a prick, man. Like you, he would come in back in the older jail, so it was set up in like a the first floor was an open day room, right, with tables, the showers in the back. And cells wrapped around two sides of it. One side over here was the sinks and showers. That was the door. And the other two sides over there were cells. And one side was just a wall. Right? So, oh, um, you would have to, when he comes in and calls commissary, he'd have a couple of trustees pushing the cart full of all the bags and everything. If one person talked while he was there, that's what I'm saying. If you, one person even talked, he was leaving right you had to have absolute fucking silence when this man was delivering commissary and i definitely seen a couple people get beat up for talking while he was there because he'd get up and leave that'd be a bad mistake but i had a decent amount of sedanios when i was in county one of them was my celly and one thing about them they always look out for each other big time yeah say so you know what i didn't even know like the Hispanic guys, since, you know, I'm a crip, man, I was saying with the black people, right? I wouldn't, it would be extremely hard to tell who was what, is what I'm going to say. So I knew who the Vayuco dudes were because you would always see them. And there was quite a, there was a few of them in there. I would see them always grouped up. So I knew who they were. I knew who the Houston dudes were because they're from Houston. We're from, you know, we're a black Houston car. So we know them. Uh, everybody else, I would have bad trouble telling who they were, like what, what city they were from, what state or whatever. The guy, the guy I remember for sure on my wing. So there was two of them, but the young one, the first way I even realized he was Sudanio is because he was on a payphone talking to his chick 
And he was like, all right, baby, I got to go. I was next in line. I could hear him. He's like, all right, baby, I got to go. Uh, I got in trouble. I got to go run security on the rec yard today. I don't think, what's he talking about? He's got to go run security. But so I asked, I asked my homeboy, excuse me, I got to straight Josh. What's up? I asked my homeboy, say, man, what's that about though talking about? He's got to go run security on the rec yard. And he started laughing. He said, oh, they're Sudanios. That's how they punish their dudes. You know, like he got in trouble. I don't know if he owes somebody some money or what happened, but he would go out there and have to just stand post, I guess, stand guard or whatever out there. Him and a couple other dudes that were in trouble and why everybody else worked out. And he had to stay out there all day. You know what, Marco? So I do know there wasn't no Aztecas over there because I did specifically ask. I did Prisoner X. What's up, man? If y'all remember my bro Prisoner X, he's actually serving a life sentence right now. 24 years in. Live from the cell block. Say a prayer that he gets that parole soon. That's crazy in San Antonio. Yeah. So they ask me all the time if there's a, uh, if there's Sudanios and Nortenios in Texas, you know, I say shit, Texas is big and people from California move here all the time. Of course, you're going to see some, but I've never actually in my life heard of uh, a click like that. Right. So to even be a Sudanio, the key thing of that is be loyal to the, Mexican Mafia in California, which that ain't going to do you any good in Texas. And to be an Ortenio, I would assume you got to be loyal to the NF, and that ain't going to do you too good in Texas. So it's just something that never really spread here, you know. Uh, Angelo, no, nah, I don't believe her, her killer is going to make parole at all. So that's what I'm saying. So listen, the Texas Parole Board, it ain't automatic. You know what I mean? It's not automatic at all. So if you're not from Texas, look at that. Simon can tell you. Durst can tell you. Anybody that's uh, Marco can tell you. Anybody that's from South Texas or live anywhere down there, any pretty much all over Texas, Selena is a goddess, right? She's like the – she's the number one other than Willie Nelson. Who else is the big musical legend from Texas, right? She's the Hispanic legend from Texas, Um uh, one time I seen a video with that fool Shaggy Too Dope. I don't know if y'all know who this goofy dude is. If anybody sees this and y'all know Shaggy Too Dope, tell him he's lucky I wasn't in Corpus when he was down. I would have drop kicked his ass off the seawall because I remember a clip or a video of him disrespecting the Selena statue, right? And when I was a young kid and a young runaway, one of the things that I wanted to uh, see was like, where's Selena from? Where, you know, everything about her. And she is a, so she was a beautiful woman, beautiful soul, beautiful singer, everything about her, right? And if a parole person granted her parole, they their life like would be threatened. They would probably be getting death threats. They would probably be getting bad publicity, right? Like, I don't think she's going to make parole under any circumstance. Oh, no. Yeah, that's right. Josh, you want to come tap in? I don't know if you're busy and then you can definitely come join in. That'd be cool. But uh, so, I mean, Selena was somebody that she did. She had a wholesome image, right? I mean, I don't know how her personal life was or anything like that. But, man, I'd be mad if she makes parole, right? Selena was somebody that we felt like was family because, you know, she sung in Sp English and Spanish and she was very successful in both. And I remember being a young fella. I don't even know how old I was. But Selena came to Houston and she performed at the Livestock Show and Rodeo, which is the biggest show in Texas. And she wore that purple outfit that was in the movie. And when I seen her in that purple outfit, I was like, oh, my goodness, this woman is beautiful. I mean, I was like floored, right? And nowadays, 
I'm just gonna keep it real, right? Like women's with big booties are in style. Women go get fake ones. They sell pads. They wear all kind of stuff. And I don't remember. I believe she said that trend. Can y'all remember who had a big booty rocking it like Selena before Selena? And who was that? Jennifer Lopez that played her in the movie, right? She was beautiful, too, in the movie, man. That was crazy. Sir Mix-a-Lot, yeah. You know what? Me and Sir Mix-a-Lot actually got a few mutual friends. I know that's hard to believe. I ain't never spoke to him or anything. But we definitely have a couple mutual friends. It's a small world, man. Yeah, Josh, look, man, say, so Selena... I don't know how she's treat, you know, thought of in other states or how she's looked at. I know that um, you even said it on that podcast, you know, Texas and California natural rivals, right? Stuff like that. So hopefully I would hope that she is looked at the same way worldwide, nationwide that we look at her. You know what I mean? But it's, it's possible not, I guess. Oh yeah, well, so Beyonce's, uh, Beyonce's family, right? So let me let me send that to you. Beyonce's family on her mama's side is from Galveston. Beyonce's cousin, her first cousin was named. So Beyonce is their family's last name, right? Her cousin was named Michelle Beyonce, and I was friends with Michelle Beyonce forever, all our life. It's crazy. Michelle Beyonce was a thick chick. She was heavier set, but in the face and the complexion in every type of way, she looked like Beyonce the singer. My buddy used to, that was his chick. And uh, i tell you what, I know dang well when he was walking, looking at her, laying up with her, he was like, man, this is Beyonce because she looked just like her. I'm going to send you that link, Josh. I'm going to send it to your phone. I got to do it through my phone. Because I want to talk to you about that. We'll talk about Selena for a second. I think I'll say that is uh, Texas legend. Texas legend. Texas legend. Uh, legend. Uh, rookie mistake. hell do I do this? Uh, shit, no, I don't even know how to share it on this. Let me see. Man, I don't even know. Oh, uh, so if you can cut and paste this some type of way, Josh, I don't know if you can. If you can, come on and hop on. Oh, see, I didn't know that. All right, if you get on the computer, then you ought to be able to copy and paste that out the comments. When Hurricane Harvey hit, I was at the Federal Halfway House in Houston. And that situation, uh, yeah, but I don't think it comes out of a link. It doesn't come out of it won't come out on a link as on the vertical live. So I did cut and paste it, but you're gonna have to do the same thing. And I'm and leave me alone. I'm full of these beers, right? Y'all know I only drink every now and then. And I do I'm usually live when I do. Shaw, what's up, my brother? So anyway, uh I was at the halfway house, the federal halfway house during Hurricane Harvey, and that was right there on Commerce Street next to buffalo bio where everything uh shot let them rock out so if the trolls come let them rock out but you know what this is subscriber mode only so i haven't had even one troll that's just a bunch of rando people popping in but the it flooded all around us so bad the halfway house only had about two days worth of food to feed us so when they ran out of food all these old low security pedos and every snitches and rats that were there 
with all the solid cats, all their families started calling and complaining and saying, you got to get some food to these people. But all the roads were flooded, like literally the grocery stores, the gas stations, everything was out of food. So they, Miss Nikki, salute. Uh, so they had nothing to feed us, right? We were cool with it. We were like, say, man, this is the, we don't know what we're going to do. I hate to say that. I hate to hear that, KK. Oh, uh, so you know what they did? They surprised us, right? They called like six chain buses, parked them outside, and said, everybody come outside. And when we came outside, we all went back to prison. They took us to Joe Corley. When we got to Joe Corley, we snuck in about, I, don't, I can't even imagine how many snow, uh, cell phones we took in. Let me hang out. What's up, bro? What's up, my brother? How you doing? We're good. We're good. KK is asking if I had toilet paper during Hurricane Harvey. I had toilet paper, KK. I just didn't have nothing to eat. The all we had was like three vending machines. They ran out instantly, bro. So when Hurricane Harvey came, we were in the only dry spot, and it was so it was up to twenty feet all around us. Right, nobody could drive in, nobody could drive out, and they only had two days supply of food. But during the actual aftermath. I've never seen anything like this before. There was helicopters just dipping down and dropping just down hmm. like baskets, picking people up off their roof. And I've seen more helicopters than I've ever seen in my entire life. Like, I guess they were flying them in from other cities and all that. It was crazy. I bet. That was, uh, that was Katrina or that was Harvey? That was Hurricane Harvey. It was just a, a massive mm. flood. I mean, it had a little bit of wind, but. The flood destroyed Houston. It was crazy. We got Galveston County, too, down here. Yeah. A lot of people. You know what's crazy, though? So the same places that flood during Harvey, they flooded during Ike. They flooded during Rita. They flooded. It's like the same. So they flood so many times, they either become industrial areas or low-income areas, right? right? And then the people that live there are low-income people that get affected by the flood 10 times worse because they don't got the insurance and stuff. It's just a reoccurring cycle to the point where some of these places probably need to stop being lived in that you know i've said that for years and it's uh what i do so see you know I mean? uh i've said that for years about about a lot of places and it's controversial because people that live in those areas obviously are personally attached to them and, and some of those areas got i'm sure there's a long rich history and all kinds of stuff and so i don't mean to dismiss that but the reality is not everywhere in the United States was intended to have people living there. And we leave a footprint. You know what I mean? We we cause damage to the environment when we build our communities that then has repercussions. And you've got cities that are on land, but they're sitting below sea level. You know, all right. kinds of areas in Florida, like you're below sea level. Oh, but we've been here all the time. You was over there with huts and shit before. Now you're trying to build apartment complexes. It's a different story, pal. And you know, you know what my house is, the above sea level. It's like three foot above sea level where right. I live. Right. Yeah. It's so Galveston, Galveston Island was the home of the largest natural disaster ever in the United States as far as deaths and property destruction. And that's how Houston got started, right? Some people from Galveston got tired of getting wiped out by the storms back then. They went inland to Houston, and that's how the biggest city in Texas started. But Houston, Galveston, Galveston actually used to be the capital of Texas until that happened. Hmm. Then they came along, put it. This is what's crazy. Galveston had a lot of two-story houses back in the old days. If you couldn't afford to raise your two-story house, then you lost the first floor. So when hmm. we drive down the street, check it out. We drive down the street, you'll see a lot of houses with a little top of a window that's only two foot tall or one foot tall because they lost there but so they filled in and raised it you know what i mean it was crazy hey josh tell them i'm gonna go grab another beer tell them how to subscribe to you and, and what you got going on and everything i'll be back in about 20 seconds you're good you're good what's up everybody uh i was gonna say welcome back to the homie hangout but this is not actually the homie hangout uh but that's the name of my channel uh is is the homie hangout i have a second channel called gang files and crime trials uh, for those that don't know, I use HOMIE as an acronym for Help Others Move in Excellence, and uh, that is imperfectly what I try to do on my channel. 
Uh, I spent time locked up as a juvenile, spent a lot of time in the streets, gang banging in Northern California, went to prison, validated all the stuff, um, paroled, you know, without, you know, flipping or tattletailing or any of that other weird stuff, uh, just paroled, man, when I was almost 30 years old and decided I was going to try to make some choices in life that, that would make it where I didn't go back to prison, maybe at least experiment with it. And, uh, that was December 9th, 2005, and, and I haven't returned to prison since except to go talk to people and tell them about the benefits of, of being out here in society. So i um, proud of that. I've done a ton of community work. I do legal work. I'm a gang expert for defense attorneys. I do immigration work. Um, I, I, I paroled to the county where I caught my case. I'm originally from San Francisco, um, but I've lived all over the Bay Area, you know, East Palo Alto, River City, all that kind of stuff. And uh, I was out in the East Bay in the early 90s, Concord, Pittsburgh area. That's where I caught my case was in Pittsburgh, uh, kind of attempted murder for shooting somebody in the neck. And uh, I paroled back to Concord, right back to the same county where I caught my case. I lived out there for a year um, until I was able to get my pro transfer. Then I went to East Palo Alto, uh, probably one of the more uh, notable violent communities in, in the Bay Area. Uh, this is before Facebook and all that shit took over. So uh, lived out there for years. I've done ministry work. I've done it all. And uh, and then slowly bounced kind of further north. Uh, and ended up in South Sac, Elk Grove area. I got three kids. I was married for years. I'm not anymore. Uh, and I got my lady. She's dope. I, I've known her all my life. But all my kids are are with that one woman they were all after i came home from prison i don't know what it's like to do time and be a father thankfully um but so we went out to sacramento area because it became impossible to find a school district that was good in an area that was affordable in the bay area stayed out there for years i went to uc berkeley uh i got a degree from sac city i almost finished my degree from uc berkeley uh underground scholars so I've had a, a, a wide range of a life, man. And, and then last year I moved out here to Reno um, because even though Grove was getting expensive, right? So that's the stuff I talk about on my channel. I talk about mental health. I talk about addiction. I talk about doing time. I got worse stories too. I, I don't, oddly enough, have as many worse stories as some people that only did like six months in jail, but I have worse stories. I share them on occasion. Uh, you can find them on my channel, but you will notice that I try to attach a bit of a message to it. Um, I have also called some people out on YouTube before, not called them out to face, just called them out for for not being who they were, right? Or, or who they presented themselves to be. I've kind of gotten away from that a little bit um, just because I realized that the circus is hella popular. And so why well, put up with all the trolls and the hate to, you know, I just do me. Um, Tim Snow, I consider him a good friend, man. Uh, I really consider him a friend. We don't do a ton of content together. We hop on lives together here and there. Um, but but that's my dude, man. And, and it's interesting because you see me historically on camera with lots of different people. Um, the people on YouTube that I'm closest with, the people I met through YouTube that I'm the closest friends with, actually aren't people I do a ton of content with. But because our friendship is bigger than that. You know, Tim Snow, we talk about parenting. We talk about you know, uh, life, we, we talk about all kinds of stuff. Uh, but, but that's what I do on the homie hangout, man, is I, I try to have diverse range of conversations. It is a prison channel and then gang files and crime trials. I'm just getting started. And, um, what I'm going to be doing is covering gang trials and crime files. Uh, most notably right now is the Aryan brotherhood indictment in California. Um, I have a lot of paperwork from that indictment. I have friends that are at the trial every day watching, and so they kind of give me a heads up on the shenanigans. Uh, I got a lot of health issues. I beat cancer twice. Uh, so I'm, I'm not always the most reliable YouTuber. Uh, Tim Snow gave me the best advice anybody on YouTube's ever given me. And and that is when it stops being fun, man, stop doing it. And, um, you know, take a break. And I've really taken that to heart. And, and it's probably hurt my channel in, in some ways in terms of taking breaks and that kind of stuff. But, um, but yeah, that, that's, to this day, it's the best advice I have. I, I've passed it on to a lot of other people. I've been on YouTube a couple of years. Um, and and anyways, there you go. I, I, I rambled, bro, to, to get you back on camera. Uh, nah, you but good. what's happening? Now nah, you're great. Uh, so check this out. Out of 
out of all the prison YouTubers. And, and so you are a prison YouTuber. I don't care how what you say about it, right? Because your biggest video is about prison. You've been to prison. Oh, right. uh, wacky, crazy. Wacky you see wax coming. <laughs> jump on with us if you want. But listen, out of everybody, me and me and Rascal right here might be the, the prison genre nerds, right? Because me and him mm -hmm. both. We love to research stuff, man. We love to Google things. This dude will be right. elbows deep in somebody's paperwork and never mm -hmm. do a video about it. He's just having fun reading about it. I do right. too. So right. there's so many times where we talk about what we done learned, we share info, and then mm -hmm. nothing ever happens. You know right. what I mean? We're just like learning about stuff and things like that. You know what? Where's this book, man? I wanted to shout this out. Oh, wait, cuz if you want to come on, let me know. Let me get this book I wanted to show. <laughs> Thank you, KK. Siobhan Wright, yeah, nobody's really covering it, man, and, and it's amazing because... Uh, nobody's covering what? The, the Aryan Brotherhood trial, and it's amazing oh, because, yeah. like, you and I have talked about it, there's so much craziness uh, associated with that trial. Like, what? no hostage beyond this point. Oh, what book is that? Hold on. Hold that up real quick. Someone take a screenshot. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Yeah. Hold on. Are you going to do full screen? What's that about? So this, listen, I'm, I'm on a... Uh, so it's his book, and I don't have permission or anything like that, but they did want me to pro to promote it, right? Here's the yeah. introduction. I'm going to read the introduction for a second, okay? Uh, one thing I do know how to read. So, I'm a, so when I read, y'all realize that i'm i'm only an eighth grade graduate and i only graduated eighth grade because it was alternative school and everybody passed as long as you didn't didn't go to jail right mm -hmm. but uh it says the author of this slim volume memoir has spent almost a decade and a half in solitary confinement cells across texas up to date as of april 14 2023 so that'd be about 16 years right now Having no human contact outside of a strip search and sticking hands out of a small hole, cutting a cell door where you're handcuffed and extort, extort, ugh, can't even talk, escorted to another cage for an hour. Make no mistake, this is an explosive and epic memoir, a true story of my life of crime, life in prison, gang involvement, as well as my road to redemption, right? So this is, uh, he's writing this, he's, I believe, uh, X A B T. I haven't got to that okay. chapter. Right? I know his mom. I, I don't really know him, but I know his mother. So she's cool people. Actually, she's gonna do a video. His mom's gonna do a video with me too, because she did some time in uh Texas prisons herself. You know, I it's funny you mentioned that whack wants the, the, the link to yeah. in that comment, but uh I right on Siobhan, I appreciate that. Uh I uh I want to get more, and and I was on the verge of doing it, but then, like you said, I, I and I often say, like I'm probably the world's worst YouTuber in, in the terms of the level of content I I put out versus kind of the work I put in. But uh, I'm I'm really focused on getting better at that. I'm out of work on an injury, so I have the opportunity. Uh, more women, man, more women. I you know they got that uh, show on YouTube. Excuse me, indicted, indicted TV, something like that is. It's a lady based out of Southern California. Uh, her husband is a podcaster, kind of a controversial dude. But she uh, uh, she has a podcast where she talks to people. And she's had a few women on there. She's done time. Uh, and and so that's cool. But I know a lot of women have been incarcerated. But like I, I got a homegirl out of Oakland uh, that did a decade on attempted murder, right, and, and came out and... Uh, she had made a promise with so she's Mexican out of Oakland and she was rocking with this black lady out of San Francisco. They, you know, they were in the women's prison together. And um, I guess in California, you know, at least in California, the, the politics of race are quite the same, but either way, she's from the North. So, you know, it's all gravy. And uh, they were taking college classes in there, community college classes. And they had made a promise to each other just based on commercials and said like, we're going to go to UC Berkeley. We're going to go to UC Berkeley. Right. The black girl was a lifer. Uh, my homegirl was not. My homegirl comes home and she gets caught up with the trappings of life. Well, she's working. She's out here. She, you know, trying to do her thing, wiggling, but she's not going to school. And uh, and so the black lady gets on the, 
you know, gets on the phone with her and is like, man, why don't you do it? Like, we made a promise that this is what we were going to do. You have the opportunity to do that. Stop fucking around and, and handle your business. So that was the wake up call she needed. She wound up, uh, she wound up going to UC Berkeley. And my first semester there was the first semester for the black lady who was in there on a life sentence and wound up getting cut loose. And her going in there and them linking up at school, like just crazy wild stories. Uh, mm. uh, you know, I got a homegirl in San Diego that, that, that used to run people and other things back and forth over the border. Um, you know, now she's a lawyer. Bro, she's a fucking lawyer. Hey, you yeah. want to hear? You want to hear a crazy story? Always. So, so, uh, my sisters. I mean, my sister. I'm fucking drunk. My, my daughter's brother. Right? He's young, man. He's like 19 years old. He got caught. He just got out of the feds for smuggling illegal aliens with his ex girlfriend mm-hmm. and her mom. When he got, how much caught, time you do on that? Curious. Man, like nine months. That's it. It's not even a serious charge, right? If you don't have a criminal background, whack. Hold on, let me figure this out for a second. Whack. Let me tell this. So, he met this girl through his older brother. She was pretty fine, right? She was pretty hot, young, young chick, older than him, probably like five years older than him. He's seventeen, so you know mm, he winning. You know what you, you know you're gonna be mesmerized, right? You right. got this young chick putting it on you, and she's probably obviously a freak uh i don't know you know what i mean but that's right here it's an air yeah. nor but i'm pretty sure either way but you're 17 and you got a hot one that's five years right, older than right, you right, you're right. You like, yeah, you're yeah, you he was like chest out proud right, right. And this boy yeah. here, listen so he's about six five he's a big ass youngster big old mm-hmm. young kid i could just imagine the cops seeing him in the car when they pulled him over but the point was yeah. so this this girl and her mom was already smuggling illegal aliens. They mm-hmm. wanted him to participate. Of course, he's down for whatever, right? He right. probably don't whatever you say, mama. Right. People, whatever, <laughs> right. right, right. So, right. bro, they get caught coming back, and uh, right away the mom and the girlfriend tell on him, and he ain't oh. got shit. He don't know nothing. He ain't talked to nobody on the phone, bro. He's literally just taking a ride for free, right? Wow. So they they tell on this boy. Well, he gets his nine months and they get probation because they told just a little bullshit. Guess what happened to her recently? I seen on the news. Mm. They made big news this area too. her and some new boyfriend that she didn't talk into doing all this shit. Transported an illegal alien and held him hostage and was holding him for ransom. Oh, shit. And got caught. And they just told me she's getting ready to take it to trial. You know, this young girl's fixing to get life. Yeah. Yeah, that's, especially if it's made the news. You know, the yeah. feds have a really high conviction rate in general, but oh, yeah. they really get pissed off and they really come for you if you did something that got you on TV. <clears> so uh, here's the crazy, you. listen, the crazy, crazy part of it, when, I don't know if you remember, they caught that guy with that 18-wheeler in San Antonio where like 40 yeah. of them died. There was yeah, about 100 yeah. of them, 40 of them died. That happened two or three days after he got caught, so... I was thinking, ooh, they're fixing to throw the book at this boy. You know what I mean? But in all reality, the guideline just wasn't there. Right. Oh, wait, let me see if I can figure this out, man. What's so up, I can't, I can't get the share, the share link off my when phone to Why send not? it, and I'm dropping it on. The, man. Oh, because you buzzing. I'm buzzed, dog. Buzzing, like, cousin. Is yeah, that buzzing, yeah, cousin? Yeah, yeah. That's really what's going on. Hold on. Samson, I was feeling good. Yeah. Hey, bro, I was getting so many trolls, so much crazy shit going on, so I turned it to subscribers only mode. It's so yeah. much better right now. Oh, I bet. I bet. Okay, so I think that's the... Robin yeah. said... Uh, Robin's left this comment a couple times, so I think she really wants you to see it. Robin W. Yeah. Nakamura said, Tim, hope you and your daughter have a good rest of your week, and I'll catch you next time. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, ma'am. Thank you so much. As I said, kind of buzzed. I apologize. Uh, right. Shot see. till I die. Wait. That's a dope name. Shot till I die. Yeah, that's shot till I die is one that's... of the most loyal people around, man. I yeah, I'm not sure who he is, but just his handle. That's one of those things where, like, you just blessed to be from a city that you can... Because, you know, it don't sound the same if you're like, you know... Albuquerque till I die. That don't have the same ring to it. Right. Hell no. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, oh, Lord, hold on. Make sure. I, man, I got two numbers saved in my phone for whack. Mm. And I don't know which one it is. And I can't. That's what Johnson is trying to get my partner. Man, listen, me and whack have an old interview on my channel, like a two part interview where he's talking about life in California. And that's the same one. What am I doing? Yeah, talking about life in California prison as being one of the few white people ever on a level four prison. And man, he gave me one of the uh, first ever. I think hmm. this is it right here. Yeah, this is the number. Wack, I'm sending that to you. Text text message right now. Yeah, him anyway, and I are supposed to link up. I want to have him on the channel. And that's one of the things from a California perspective that, that I wanted to kind of talk to him about. I'm sure everybody asked him about it. But uh, but how was that conversation? I don't think I've seen that interview. No, so that that interview happened on my channel when it was pretty new i was only probably man i probably had ten thousand subscribers or something that's what i'm saying he came through and showed me a bunch of love that's when i was living out in the country i had that house in the country i used to do all my videos in the washroom right the laundry room in the back man it would be listen bro it'd be like a thousand degrees back there oh, mosquitoes, mosquitoes biting me you know what i'm saying bro it's the country and this room has cracks in the wall and shit. so there might be a roach running by right. in the back dog <laughs> It's so crazy. scorpions on the ground and shit, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Snake jumping out, trying to bite me in the middle of the line. You know, me, me and Mr. Larry, me and Mr. Larry did our first ever interviews, man. Rest in peace to him. He came man, down. We did the first day we did at my house. The second day we did at a hotel because I rented him a room. Mm. And that hotel was cold, man. That hotel was in the hood. I felt bad about it. I even told him, look, Mr. Larry, I ain't got too much money, right? I said, but I, I'll buy your bus ticket. I'll rent your room and I'll take you out to eat the whole time you're here because he had just got off intensive supervision probation and he hadn't really been anywhere. Right. So, you know, I got to take this man to the beach for the first time in his life. Shit he was like down there this. in Galveston, huh? Mm -hmm. yeah. So where was he from? from? Like, where's... He was from Dallas. Okay, yeah, he and was that's from kind Dallas. Yeah, Wack, what's up, Wack? Oh, he's in his room with audio. Yeah. <clears throat> what's up with y'all, huh? What's happening? Man, just kicking it, man. We just chilling, tapping in with the live. What's up, bro? I ain't talked to you in a couple of weeks. You all right? Yeah, I think you were uh, out and about with your daughter, huh? Going on field yeah. trips. That's yeah. what's up. You seen it? Man, say that was yeah. so much fun, bro. They could, it's, a, it's a restaurant that uh, Tim and Fertitta, the dude that owns the Rockets, he owns it. It's called the Aquarium. And it's a yeah. tiny little amusement park, dog. It's got like a... So it had a big Ferris wheel and then had a little baby Ferris wheel. My daughter is the scariest little thing you ever seen because she won't ride the Ferris wheel. She won't ride nothing. All I could get her to ride was a little train that ride around the park and a little baby Ferris wheel. Yeah, hey, she's smart. Hey, shit, right. if she, hey, if she was meant to fly, she'd have wings. She'd think right. like I do. You feel me? That's real. That's real. She's low risk. She's like, oh. Yeah. I'm trying to tell her, come on, baby, let's have some fun. No, daddy, it ain't fun. Go karts. <laughs> I try to take her to go ride the go karts today. You know, yeah. she told me they sound scary. I don't want to ride yeah. them. Rascal, man, yeah. look, I took, well, I didn't take her. I, she went to Disney World twice. The last time she went was probably six months ago. She was scared to ride everything except the teacups. <laughs> like, what are yeah, you even mine, doing? Uh, what are you even doing there? Yeah, mine went. Uh, yeah, you know, man. hey, you know what's crazy is that, like, I think for kids, Disneyland and Disney World and all that is more of a uh, an experience of them just being there, seeing everything, rather than them going on rides and shit. You know what I mean? And then as you get older, you want to go on a ride, but not me because I'm good, homie. I'm not getting on no fucking roller coaster, bro. Uh, come on, man. You know what? We used to have Astro World back in the day. It was right across the street from the Astrodome, and they had that ride. I think it was called the Superman or some shit like that. Oh yeah, yeah, the Superman on everything. You hang, you you literally strap in, and then hang up, uh, hang down with your feet, and boy, yeah. that fly you around. You feel like your feet. He, look, somebody said if I get into a jump in the CCFS, I don't even know what CCFS is. Oh, oh, that's the little boxer sir that uh, Mikey from uh, Chicago oh. took. Now it was the Slitters report. Oh, oh, uh, oh, oh, Tony and them with the boxer yeah. shit. Yeah. So yeah. if you jump in, PYP boxer said they'll sponsor you. 
I mean, hey, if my hey, if my back look, if I didn't have three surgeries on my back, I I'd have hopped on there and just squabble so squabbled a couple of cats down real quick. You feel me? Hey, you know, speaking of that, I, I want to touch on a Disneyland thing. But since you mentioned the back surgeries, uh, uh, because that's what I'm going through right now. I got a, a blown disc in my back and some nerve damage. And don't don't really have they cut on you yet? No, I I go. They gave me the epidural. That didn't do nothing. Then they gave me like three shots on Thursday where uh -huh. they go in and burn the nerves in certain places. Yeah, yeah. That shit hurt like hell. And I hurt feel like worse. a motherfucker. I feel worse. I was like, I really feel like I got played here because you guys said it was similar to the epidural and it's not fucking similar to the epidural. That's like saying getting your finger cut off is similar to a fucking tattoo. That's right. not true. Say, say, let me let me say something real quick, right? That's cool, like the the YouTube boxing shit or something. But I didn't see them benefit in no type of way from this shit, right? Like to pull up somewhere. Oh, their channels? Um, no, I didn't see any benefit to them whatsoever. It seemed like a, uh, you know, Tony's my boy, dog. Like I literally talked to him the day before the fight. He texted me, you know what I mean. But if I was gonna go on there and like really get paid, dog, like, like make some real money, I'm guarantee like some. Big views or something? I don't know. Like I don't know. Just to go on there, rep Texas and all this shit. Uh, yeah, that don't even make no sense. I feel like so. I don't know about you know. I don't know the details of this fight, but I know that the first one uh, did actually make some money. The 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 first one that they had. The, the Gunner and uh, yeah. Gunner and Ch Cholo Trucker. Yeah, that one made that made a chunk of a bread. Um, uh, and this one I don't know because of how like the pay per view and stuff was set up. Uh, uh, I'm not sure. I I know Tony was really trying to sell the fight. Obviously, Mikey was doing his part as as kind of the promoter and the sponsor. I will say, I just from a viewer standpoint, um, I think Mikey put on with this uh, uh event. He put on a better, better event, event than what they had before. Um, but the differences before with the with the Cholo Trucker fight, there was multiple fights leading up to it. It was kind of like watching a real boxing match, right? Where you got the undercards and everything else. This was just a quick little three rounds. You had the comedy dude. I don't feel like he was really that funny, but um, but like professional, you know, camera work and that kind of stuff. Mikey put on a better show. I think it really just depends on the draw of the fighters. Like, so you know, you know what? Uh, listen, check this like out. They right? could have marketed the shit out of that, bro. A, a, a dude that just beat cancer, that's been to prison, fighting a dude who just talks to a bunch of people from prison and is wearing a mask. Like, marketing wise, if they would have done more work, I think they could have got more views. I'm not saying they didn't get a lot of views because I don't know. I have no idea. And, and I wouldn't ask. My bad, whack, whack. You got a bad echo. I text whack and told him sometimes if you're on a cell phone and they actually say it on StreamYard, right? If you're using yeah. an Android cell phone, you might have an echo and they can't stop it. So you're supposed to use earbuds or whatever. But that's my boy. I definitely don't want to tap him out the show, but I don't no, know. No, no, I don't want to no. mess the show up either. But so that's, that's what I was gonna say, right? Salute to them. But if I was gonna do anything like that, I'm not fighting nobody. Unless it's a hell of a benefit to me. I'm right. 43 years old, single dad. I ain't scared, but I'm saying fight for free or fight for ego or fight for reputation and all that shit. I, I don't need none of that. Like, I don't go around acting hard or like I can beat everybody up or need. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, nah, hey, hey, look. I, I step outside yeah. my door. I'm cool, but check this out. So I'm pretty sure all y'all know who Street Beefs is, the YouTube channel yeah. where people settle beefs. Scarface been subscribed to my channel for so long, it's crazy. Like he watches these Texas videos. Scarface? No, uh Scarface and own street beefs, the one that runs. Oh, the oh I thought you were talking about Scarface. Now, the rap, no, the rapper Scarface. Yeah. Now, this is how small the world is. The the six foot seven, three fifty football player I was just talking about earlier that rolled with the really? black dudes in Idaho, right? Of all places. That's one of Scarface's best friends, though. The rapper Scarface. Mm. Now they're they're like so. I ain't gonna say her name because I don't like tying it to it. But do you remember when I sent you the plaque and the stats of the little girl that's nine years old that's blowing up, going viral? That's yes. her daddy. Yeah, that's her dad. The woman talking. Oh, about okay. This. Yeah, that's best friends with face. One of face yeah. best friends. You know what I mean? And check this out. So, as you was talking about being cool with people but not necessarily doing content with them and shit, 
this man is close with the with one of the top rappers in the entire world, and he, he don't even have one picture with the dude. They mm. told him a long time ago, real friends don't got to take pictures. You know what I mean? That's, that's I don't know where. Hey, am I, am, I, am I still echoing, Cuff, or no? Nah? No, nah, you came back right. What happened? Look, I wanted to, I, I was going to say uh, about uh, the little, the last little boxing match was this, right? Like, so, uh, and, and y'all give me your opinion on this and be 100. Not saying that, I mean, y'all niggas always 100, but I'm saying, like, I, I really believe that this whole prison genre and all the drama that has went into it has kind of like turned people away from it. So I don't, so I don't think the hype behind the second fight was as big as the hype behind the first one. Does it make any sense? Yeah, I a hundred percent agree. I think, uh, I, and I think for a couple of reasons. So I agree flat out with everything you just said. Um, I think, it has, and I think particularly around California, right? Um, California channels rarely, if ever, get action. And especially if you're talking about like California, you know, Mexican channels or North South or that kind of stuff, right? Um, do not get traction with major platforms, even major platforms that are considered prison genre or, or true crime or came out of that genre get no traction outside with with these other channels and i think part of it is because of the goofiness and the bullshit and and it's a, wow. it's a circus right i think the hype for this fight too because i was looking to see if their numbers went up and then i had a little aha moment of course their subscribers numbers aren't going to go up because they're all already had the same subscriber base right they're driving for the same pool so like right. if you're watching the fight because you like stories written by a current prisoner. You're like, that's my dude. I'm going to watch the fight and I'm going to root for him. That ain't getting probably you already know. Right. You already know who EBK family is and maybe you're subscribed or maybe you're not. But vice versa, too. If you watch EBK family and you're like, I'm rocking with the homie, you damn sure already know who stories written by a current prisoner is and have already decided if you like their content or not. So you're not drawing anybody from the outside. Somebody in, in Virginia, somebody in Wyoming, it, that doesn't watch California Mexican prison channels is not right. going to hear about this fight. And there's no platform to go to. I mean, Tim opens up his channel to, to a degree to folks, right? But there's no real big platform. The 1090s, the 23 and ones, the, the Pinos, the whoever out there, I don't even know half of them. Uh, they're not going to open the door. And I think part of it is because it's a fucking circus. But there's also this belief that anybody that, that comes from a background of being a northerner or a southerner from California is a piece of shit. And, right. and I, I've seen that just even with, with Milk on YouTube streets, right, where Milk is so protecting his brand, which I don't blame him for, right? Just it leave out his credibility or whatever. I don't care about none of that shit. He, the dude has a platform and it's a sizable platform and he has a brand, whether people like him or not. And to protect his brand, he don't want to be on camera with folks that have certain backgrounds and certain hey, issues. Was, and I don't blame I know him. exactly what you're talking about. I'm still laughing when you bring yeah. that up right now. And, that was, and that I was don't, cold. And I don't blame him for that, but I... I wonder if he's that concerned if somebody's like, hey man, I got my homeboy from uh, you know, from Missouri that's gonna hop on. If he's gonna be like, hold on, man, wait, let me check. I got this YouTuber from Newark that's gonna hop on. Hold on, let me check. Probably not. And and I think part of that is because the trolling, but also the real life bullshit of a lot of content creators from, from California. Uh, and I'll just say, bro, in particular, Northern California, I'm not here to like take shots at anybody or anything, but cats have checkered past and cats have goofy histories on YouTube. And I think it's a turnoff, bro. And it's frustrating. So I'm, I'm glad you said it. Wet. I, I agree with you 100 percent, bro. And, and this is the thing, bro. Uh, and not to go not to not to come on your shit, Tim Snow, and, and turn your conversation in the left field. But. No, you it's a good you thing to rack. It's a good thing rack along here. You know what I mean? Because you, for one, rack, you you always. You know what I'm saying? One thing that I've that I've noticed about you, and and I fuck with you for that, is that 
You know, you know what I mean? You always said what you meant, meant what you said, homie. And and, and see, this is the thing, bro. And, and Tim Snow can tell you, can, can, can back me up on this, is I told Tim Snow, I said, look, homie, when the, and this is before any northerner that I know of was on YouTube. The only the first northerner I seen on YouTube, he ain't even on there no more. It was a dude. He he look he he kind of looked like us a little bit, <laughs> but uh, and you know what I'm talking about. Uh, he was I forgot his name, but he made a few videos, had a couple war stories, and then he fell off. Is um, that that ranting dropout dude? I never saw content, but I've heard about him. Yeah, I, I don't know. I can't. Uh, uh, he 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 didn't tell no dropout stories. Mm. But uh, anyways, um, I always and I told Tim Snow. I said, look, bro, if a northerner comes on here that's certified, that's really been through the ringer, you know what I'm saying? I said they're gonna blow the fuck up. And as soon as I said that, bro, that's when uh, that's when Rojo and uh, uh, Flacco popped up on Tony shit, and then we all know what happened after that. But the thing is, is that. When other people from other states, they get whatever, they get turned off by, oh, they're dropouts, this and that. This is my thing, and I've always told a motherfucker this, bro. I said, look, for a northerner uh, to to be a dropout is not like they're automatically a fucking rat or a piece of shit or a fucking lame or a degenerate. I said, they, they their fucking programmers run so fucking... Mm -hmm. uh, militarily that motherfuckers get hit because you know he dude was Sancho to uh to the dude's baby dad you know to the dude you know what oh, yeah, the politics the politics right. ugly you know it's what I mean and so I always take it with a with a with a with a grain of sand and, and, and my first thing my first position is this and it'll always be this is I'm not on YouTube to politics bro I'm not on the yard no more. So right. I could this do is a not fuck that, bro. Right. You know what I mean? Like, hey, that ain't, you know what I'm saying? That ain't my business, but mm -hmm. I will always, and I, and I, and, 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 you know, I get on there and I put CXIV, and, mm -hmm. hey, and that's my shit, bro. I, I will always have a special place in my heart, homie, for the, for the Northern Russia, homie, straight up. Right. Right. You know what I mean? Anyway. Like, I, lo I love them dudes, you know what I mean? Because they, you know, uh, without, you know, going into detail, you already know what's up, no, right? That's real, you know I mean? yeah. I, I did a video, uh, uh, I did a video on the origins of the CXRV, right? And, and I got a homeboy that I was in prison with that was in YA um, when, when that stuff first got started, right? And, and he actually sent me a picture that that I believe I posted. I'm pretty sure he gave me permission to post it. He might not. He might have just sent me the picture and told me not to post it. But, um, but yeah, I did a, a video on the origins of that. And, and for those that know, they know, right? There, there's a yeah. little history in California that that goes back many, many decades. You know, I've been, uh, I, I'm kind of on this, uh, what's up, Joey? I'm kind of on this, uh, not campaign really, but but to, to point to something that you had just said, and, and I I did a video about this dude, Mateo, right? Who was a, a really well-known, uh, uh, William Ainsworth, that's his name, Morty. And, and, uh, there you go, yeah, yeah, and, William Ainsworth, yeah, 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 that's him. I, I think, uh, I'm on a bit, I wouldn't say a campaign, but something that I'm going to be very intentional about pointing out is uh, is, is kind of the use of this word dropout and this idea that uh, that if you parole, right, you head your business, you do your time how you do your time, and then you parole. And when you parole, you choose not to be with the shenanigans anymore. Right. Um, that, that somehow then that makes you on par with somebody that flipped or or somebody that right. you know made a pc move or whatever i know that when i was coming up and and when i was in prison and even when i first came home from prison in 2005 um the word dropout was reserved for people that signed up for for one of the organizations and debriefed yeah, um, yeah. and that was it but but and then you know if you if you went to the other side, if you locked it up for whatever reason and went S and Y, then it's like, okay, you're a piece of shit. You know, we have a bunch of derogatory terms. I don't much care about that stuff because, like you said, I'm not in prison either. I ain't been there in 20 years, so fuck, I look like you know what I mean. Like exactly. Uh, but we gotta normalize. I uh, wish I could say that. The, <laughs> right, you will. But we gotta normalize this reality that, bro, people grow up. People, you know, I came home from prison at 30. 
I would hope if I went to the corner with a red bandana in my pocket and a fucking hair net and trying to politic on people, that somebody would have socked me <laughs> in my mouth. Man, right? hey, like, bro. Like, because you, you got no business. So that, but that online and especially on the social media stuff, oh, that fool's a drop out, fool's a piece of shit, that fool's a level, that fool's a lane, that fool's a rat, that fool's a this. Hold on, bro. You're using a whole lot of big words, little kid. Like, calm down. It's, and we got to normalize for the benefit of our young people. Look, bro, you get a hot little chick, you get her pregnant, man, own those responsibilities of raising them kids, bro, and, and back up off the block. And that doesn't make you this despicable human being. Right. You know, you get a cool little job and you don't have, like, I can't party all night because I got to go to work in the morning. I got a union job making $30 an hour. Cool, bro, run that. And when I was getting out and when I was in there, we celebrated that. We encouraged that. Right on, homie. There's plenty of us in prison. And there's plenty of people that are going to come back. You don't have to be one of them. We don't actually need you in here. You know what I mean? Well, we're um, good. If you come here, we got a bed for you. It's all love. But but your family needs you. Your community needs you. Like, that go. That's why I say what I say when I when I do my little homie hangout thing. And we've gotten away from that. Where, like, people are like, bro, if you're 45 and you don't act like you're 16, you're a weenie. Hold on, homie. Like, in any other walk of life, if you find somebody who's 40 that it behaves and believes the same way they did at 15, you'd be like, that fool kind of slow. Like, you know, he he might need so a little medication what somebody, or something. You know what somebody left in my comments the other day? Hmm. They said, imagine being a 40-something-year-old wigger that dresses <laughs> like a teenager. Wow. <laughs> right. Hey, but hold up. Hey, hold up. 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 Hold I'm tired of uh, I'm tired of us wizards getting all the heat, homie. What about the white boys that that are Norteños and Sureños? Mm -hmm. What do we hey, call man, this? Mm -hmm. Hold on. Let me let me talk. Let me address this though first, right? I'm thinking, boy, you can ain't never seen me five out of seven days in the week. You gonna see snow and some motherfucking steel toed work boots, some blue you jeans, and a mm -hmm. fucking t shirt, right? And that's yeah. it. When I go home, I take that off and put on some fucking pajamas and house shoes and shit. You, you did? So hey, but look, I, think, I got a, I, I got look, a quick I, I got a quick oh, saying, what, what, what kind of fantasy do you got in your life about how I'm dressing, right? What kind mm. of weird shit is this? What kind of fascination you got with me? You know what I mean? Right. That you're picturing. Because I'll, hey, Am I wearing pants right now or not? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm going to say yes, and I'm going to leave it at that. Wearing, he's wearing I hope pants, so. Is, sure. I'm wearing pants. How the hell you know what I'm wearing? Bro, it is, it hey, is look, I got a story. Hey, look, I got a quick story to, uh, to piggyback off of what Rascal was saying. Okay. So, I don't know. This is probably about six, seven years ago, right before I left San Diego, and we was hanging out one night on the block. And uh, same block that we, we call it the island and shit. That's where all the oosters, you know what I mean? And so uh, we out there, and there's probably like there's probably like 10 of us that are all about the same age, and then there's probably like five or six young homies that are out there doing whatever they're doing and shit. And, uh, you know, we out there posting. Ain't nobody doing nothing and shit. So uh, I look up, homie, and the, and the one time pull up, and they stop. And I'm thinking, and a couple of the homies take off running and whatever, you know what I mean? I'm thinking like, okay, well, fuck. I'm not tripping, though, because I ain't on parole or nothing, you know what I mean? I'm right. good, you know what I'm saying? And, um, but the police, though, it's two cops, but they're two older cops. And the one dude, like, it's a white dude, got the, got the cop mustache and shit. And he's like, uh, he's like, what's going on with the LVC boys tonight? Y'all good? And, uh, my mother's just kind of, like, walking away, like, you know what I mean? I'm like, yeah, we, I'm like, yeah, we good. You know, like, all right, man, hey, well, you guys, uh. You guys have a good night, man, and keep it down. I don't want to have to come back down here. All right, man, you have a good night, too. And uh, so he got on, right? And so I remember uh, leaning back in, against the truck, homie, and, and, and finished my beer or whatever, and I just had this thought, bro. I'm like, you know what's fucking crazy is I was doing the same thing in the same spot 20 motherfucking years ago. Yeah. I said, that's sad as fuck. And after that night, bro, I haven't went down there and hung out on that block since, bro. Not one fucking time. I mean, I've been down there to the homies' houses to my, right. cause I consider them my people. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, you know, I was raised with the Samoans, so I go down there and for family functions or whatever. 
went out there hanging out, drinking the OD right there on the on the block doing that. Nope, not not right. ever since. It was a wake up call for me, bro. It was like what twenty years later, and you're doing the same fucking thing, bro. Man, That's, listen. So, uh, so if I if I tell you how long it's crazy. been since I've been to somebody's house and hung out with them, man, you'll say snow weird as fuck, right? But so before I went to the feds. I've been to a bunch of people's house, but I really wasn't into hanging out, right? I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna hit and run. I'm gonna go and do what I gotta do and get the hell up out of there. Uh man, I I didn't came to the point to where it don't even make no sense to ever if I still wanted to try to claim to be a gang member or active or anything right. like this, I don't even deal with nobody to, to try to represent that. You know what I mean? Like uh right. what what gang do I belong to? I stay home all day chilling with my daughter, you know, and that's that's the real deal. So I did a video, shout out to CEO Hockley. Hockley was a real deal, hardcore crip. You know what I'm saying? Running shit in prisons, uh, shot people out here, put in a bunch of work, did all kind of stuff. And he's to the point in his life right now, he's running business and everything. He was like, man, fuck yeah. these gangs and fuck crips and fuck. I was like, say, man, I can't. I right. probably well, never say that, might right? Might be a bridge like, too far, right? That yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I should say, man, you know, uh, so I'm not going to ever say that coming out of my mouth. I didn't even want to repeat it right there, but I, I got what he was saying. You understand? Right. Like, like it's time to now be the dad and everything. And, you know, so whack, whack, man, is real life, real deal, hardcore crip. Live by, die by, probably always going to be about it. But you know what? Whack is a fucking great friend like mm -hmm. on no type of gang activity and a good dad so yeah, man, i appreciate it. you are too bro you know what i mean rascal, I, I, hey, so, man, I, see, I see rascal doing it with, with the where you walking that damn dog man i'll yeah. tell you about them dogs yeah. man them dogs yeah, my are boy blue yeah, it's my boy blue man yeah, yeah. i mean that, hey you know what? We sat in them shells, homie, and we and we participated in, in them stupid ass politics, homie, and and we threw we threw so much time away from our yeah. family and loved ones, bro, and um and we all did it because um we yearned to be some we we yearned to be loved and accepted, bro, and we just didn't know how to go about it the right fucking right. way. You know what I mean? Because I'm gonna tell you this, homie. Every motherfucker that's in that in that in that dungeon. The belly of the beast that we call prison, bro, is hurting, bro. Mm -hmm. All they ever wanted was to be accepted and loved. You know what I'm saying? And and, and we didn't and, they, and we didn't know how to go about doing it, bro. You know them dudes. You got them dudes that have, um, you know. Shout out to the to the to uh to the big homies that were behind them walls for 20, 30 years and held their mud. But you know what? Mm -hmm. Instead of instead of holding them in high regard like that, man. We should pray for them dudes because them dudes are, you know how much internal pain that them dudes have, bro? Man. You know what I mean? There's, there's, you know, them dudes are probably, you know, most of them dudes have been locked up since they were teenagers, bro. Uh, what's the uh, the OG homie? Uh, and if you don't want to say his name, uh, uh, Rascal, I understand. But the OG uh, northerner uh, big fella, he's been down since he was like 16 or 17. And now he's in his like 50s or 60s. I think he's on the Fed side now. Yeah, there's I a mean, few of them over there, but yeah, like corny, corny. Yeah, they, yeah, right there you go, time. corny. Yeah, it's, I mean, just hearing that story, bro, that shit mm -hmm. made me sad, dog. Like, it, you know what I mean? Because this, he, he probably, he probably ain't fucking with his socks off yet, bro. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, he ain't enjoyed life, bro. That's all he knows is to politic, to, 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 to. to violence and, and and all that that's sad bro so hold on cuz let me stop you right there right because of course this is texas prison stories and the only point we have to this is this is not the life you want let me say uh, let me say a couple things while i'm buzzing and shit right yep. i want to get something clear because they was talk in the your shit too. tim let's go listen <laughs> nah they were in the comments too disrespecting me and my and my bro saucy d because i told a story where we pulled a play on an inmate that was really pussy so we do the do the uh old run around where you know hey somebody i think somebody's gonna hit you man you probably, oh, probably ain't gonna be too safe you know what i mean yeah. and then so yeah well, well basically the homeboy gets some paying protection right mm -hmm. they're all in the comments people don't quite understand they're calling him a a predator and he's bad people and and all of this shit. And i left the comment or, or or they said what if he was doing that right now? I, I left a comment back saying, well, if he was doing that right now, 
I got all respect for it because that's how the penitentiary works, right? Strong, right. survive, weak, die. And not only will he be eaten, but somebody will be protected. And he mm -hmm. ain't going to do no old weird predator ass sexual shit to him and none of that. He just want to eat some food. You know what right. I mean? So nobody's losing right here, right? People don't got it. But when he's talking about people like Corny and Skip and all these other dudes that they talk about from Northern Cal. And guess what? Once so one of the big homies from Texas that people talk about all the time, he sent me a, a text message the other day. Well, mm -hmm. not a text message. I'll take that back. But a JPay, right? A legal mm -hmm. one. So I don't want to get it misconstrued that i'm doing any bullshit illegal j pay right but he's got 99 years right he don't even come up for parole until 40 what 49 and a half years he got that when he was about 18 or 19 years old after wow. catching a murder case as a juvenile you know what i mean so he did his entire juvenile time all his teens everything in prison got right out and killed another person and i'm not saying like so don't get this right don't get this wrong i love the man right but considering what he done two times in a row, he's probably where society says he should be. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? But at the same time, doesn't make him this day today a bad person. You know what I'm saying? Because he did that 20 years ago or whatever, 25 years ago. But you will be in there with people like him, with mm -hmm. people like that corny dude, people that have literally been in there since they were children. You understand? These are hardcore convicts that are never coming home. Right. When you bring your ass in there with a little two, a three, a funky five, guess what? A 20-year fucking sentence seems like nothing to them. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, you're going home with this 20-year fucking sentence, and I'm never seeing the free world again. So I want people to think about what that means, man. Like, you, yeah, you're hardcore. You can fight. You'll do what you got to do. But are you ready to do what you got to do and stay there forever with these men? You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what it's going to come down and, to. I, and I, th I think that's a great question for people to ask. Those. And also, are you willing to do it for that? Like, it's so I can do time standing on my head. I don't want to do time. I, I, I really make an effort and I'm pretty successful at it with some, some minor mistakes, you know, some years back in my midlife crisis that I've talked about. But I've been pretty successful the last 20 years at not engaging in behavior that really puts me at risk of going back. Not because I can't do the time. I've been doing time since I was 10 and a half years old. I can do time all day. I don't want to. I like my life is out here. I have things to live for out here. I prefer to be out here. So it's can you do it? Sure, there's a lot of people that can, but then my question is, well, what are you doing it for though? Is 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 that worth it? Is I can do horrendous things to somebody. I'm capable of it. I don't want to. Like, unless you really push me to have to defend myself or my family, bro, do you. It's, there's so much more out here. And it's the other thing. Well, can, so stress. can I ask you a question? I apologize. I hate interrupting. No, go for it. But say so rascal's so damn smart. He'll take, he'll talk for like 10 minutes straight and make sense. And you're just listening to it but sometimes so sometimes i gotta interrupt you for the sake yeah. of the show, right because we're still I running appreciate it. right but i appreciate yeah, it i got a question for both of y'all and try to keep it realize that the next man got an answer too right so mm -hmm. can you and you don't have to talk about the situation but do either one of y'all remember the last time that a man disrespected y'all out here in the free world no yeah. and how Go ahead, did, whack. I remember how did, mine too. How did you so you ain't even got to say what he did. Unless yeah, you I mean, uh, it was it. To handle it. Uh, I went to jail, but I but luckily I had a uh, a sheriff that was like he he knew what old boy it did. You know what I'm saying? Like he, it was basically. Remember, I told you when I got blackballed from trucking in California, I got into one with the yard boss and right. This motherfucker comes running out the office talking about, hey, motherfucker. And I'm like, well, you ain't going to talk to me like that, homie. Oh, yeah, oh, well, he tried to say something crazy, and I just basically, like, picked him up by the collar of his shirt and put him up against the building. I was like, hey, homie, watch your fucking mouth. And so he went in and said that I, you know, whatever. And, you know, cool, uh, out there in San Bernardino and shit, and uh, the sheriff that pulled up, he happened to, he was cool. He was like, look, man. He said, I'm going to tell you like this. He said, dude wants to press charges when I'm trying to talk him out of it. He said, but look, man, 
go ahead and get this shit out of your uh, truck, put it in your car, and he was like, just go ahead and beat Pete home, man. Have a good one. Mm-hmm. And that was, you know what I mean? Like, so, um, I, 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 I could have went to jail, you know what I mean? And, and, and that shit really, uh, I started, started, that shit was on my mind for a couple of weeks. Like, damn, bro, like, you, you could have lost it all right there, right there and there over, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. No, and damn well, that dude didn't mean no threat to me. The dude was no threat to me. You know what I mean? Like, but yeah, so. I mean, so that's real. That's honesty. What about you, Josh? You remember the last time somebody disrespect you out in the free world for no reason? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know, we don't forget stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, it was on New Year's, uh, New Year's Eve. And uh, it, it kind of carried over a couple of days, but the incident was New Year's Eve, and fireworks are illegal in California. Right? You can get little sparklers and shit sometimes, but real fireworks are illegal out here in Nevada, not so much. And so uh, I shot to the reservation down the road, and I was really excited. My kids were supposed to be out here; they didn't make it, but nonetheless, I went and got some fireworks, right? Like real fireworks. And so. Uh, we had a couple of youngsters over. My my neighbor was over here with his kids. And and it wasn't a whole big old long thing. It wasn't no block party, but like the sun had barely gone down. It was maybe eight o'clock because it's you know, kids gotta go to sleep, that kind of stuff. So it wasn't late. And we go out just right in front of my house on the on the street right there. And they let off like two cakes and a couple little things. So it all goes well. The kids are having a blast. Yay. A couple of the neighbors that come out and look, like, oh man, that's dope. And again, keep in mind, this is Nevada. Fireworks are not unusual. That right? I, I, I bought them five minutes down the road. Now, technically, it is illegal within city limits to let them off. There's only certain places on the res where you get a permit. And all. So technically, I was breaking the law. But I'm letting off fucking fireworks at 8 o'clock at night on New Year's Eve, right? So uh, as I'm done, I, I, I get my trash. I roll my trash can up. I'm actually cleaning up. Right, so it lasted less than 10 minutes from start to end. And I'm cleaning up my mess. And this dude comes huffing, and my street has no street lights, so it's real, real dark. And it's cold as a fog. And all I hear is, hey, hey, and you can tell the person's out of breath, but like moving fast towards me. And I was like, hold on, man. Uh hey, but I demand to know in the name of, of Airman Marshall, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I demand to know who's there. And and so I'm, you know, the kids are gone. You know, they're over, my neighbor's over there. My lady's already back at the house. I'm just cleaning up the mess. And I was like, hold on, man, what? And it's hard. I can't see who it is, but I feel like I recognize the voice. So I'm like, hold on, man, what? Well, I'm, I demand. And then he gets closer and I say, hey, man, it's me. He goes, huh? And a dude is like this little drunk dude that's my neighbor. But he works at the little liquor store up the road. And what I'm guessing, what I found out later is he came huffing and puffing from the liquor store hella fast. And, uh, but I know him. But I go into the store. But we've interacted several times. I walk my dog all through my neighborhood. Everybody knows my dog. So I was like, man, it's Joshua. And he goes, who? I said, Joshua, man, with blue. Right? Oh, okay. And his demeanor changed. Oh, okay, man, what's up? Uh what would you, yeah, I got, my mom called me and said, things go crazy. I said, nah, bro, I just let off some fireworks for the kids, but I'm done, though. And I had my trash can right there. I was like, I'm done. I'm just cleaning up. Yeah, man, because, you know, you can't be, okay, well, excuse me, I'm done. It's all good. It's a dead issue. I'm cleaning up. It's, yeah, because, duh, 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 or, excuse me, I, I understand. I'm done. I'm cleaning up. Right? Like, I'm. Because I feel like the longer this conversation goes on, the more likely that it could get physical. I don't want to hear your life story. Right. You've made clear that you don't like the fireworks. I am making clear physically and with my words that the fireworks are over. So this conversation doesn't even need to happen no more. Like, we're on the right. same page. And uh, I said, you know, but I told him, I was like, well, it's like 8 o'clock at night, man. I just did a little something for the kids, you know. It's, but we're done. It's good. Okay, so we part ways. Me and my lady go out. Right. We go out a uh, little casino down the road. Right. Get some dinner, fool around at the casino, do a little New Year's thing. I get a phone call from my neighbor. Hey, uh, the boys just came. The police just came by. I said, fuck me. The police came by. Right. And we're in like a multifamily unit. Right? It's not an apartment. It's like a kind of four place. I think. And uh, 
and, and sleep my neighbor in the back. And he's like, yeah, they just came by uh, asking about fireworks. And, and his kids were some of the kids out there. It's like, man, I just shoved him the baby and was like, I don't even know what you're talking about. I'm just in here, you know? Uh, and they were like, okay, we're, well, we're looking for a guy named Joshua. And he was like, no, I don't, I don't know nobody named Joshua. I don't, right. Do you know your neighbor named Joshua? He's like, I don't, you know, he holds his way. He, you know, he don't have no interest in talking to the cops. I don't know who you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about, man. I just got my kids inside, mind of my business. But he called me and told me about it. I've never once had an interaction with a police officer in this state, let alone my town. Ever once. The cops don't know my name around here. I'm not known at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Somebody just told on you. And so I'm like, this motherfucker, after our interaction, he called the cops on me. And I take calling the police on me very personal, right? Like, I, I don't, because right. you can send me back to jail. I will check my own behavior. But when you call the cops, you're trying to get me sent to jail. And I don't want to go to jail. And I know what can happen in jail. And I might never come home. I catch a case. Some you know, I just I take stitching. Like, don't stitch on me, because that's like you trying to hurt me. And and on a scale of things to do wrong, I'm like, I let off some fireworks. You know what I mean? Like it's it's it the same thing in the world. So I didn't see the dude for a couple of days. And I went walking over there to the liquor store. And I ain't gonna lie at the liquor store. I seen a lady at the liquor store, and I'm like, hey man, where that fool at work in? Right. And I'm not going to go bang on his door because I'm like, nah, he, that's confrontation. I ain't doing that. Right. Uh, but I'm going to catch him at some point. Uh, the spicy Michelada. Man, and yeah, so I can't see him. I, uh, I told him, hey, uh, uh, I said, what's up with the dude that works here? She's like, what you talking about? He ain't been here in a few days. I said, man, a rat motherfucker told on me. She's like, what? So the dude wound up losing his job, apparently. Right. Uh, but then I catch him. Uh, uh, after he lost his job like a week later, I catch him like the next day at the store. And he goes, hey, man, how's it going? Like, everything's normal. And I said, hey, man, you tell on me? You called the police on me on New Year's? Uh, uh, but my, my mom did. I said, your mom don't know my fucking name. Uh, oh, man. And he, he, told, like, he, told, he tried to put it on his mama? Right. And this is a grown Sorry, man. Nasty. I mean, this is a this is a 30-plus-year-old man, right? And he's like, uh, well, my, my, my mom did. I said, mom don't know my fucking name. I've never seen his mom. I just assumed that he has one that she lives there. I've never seen her. And so I didn't even get my change, to be honest. Like, in a sense, he kind of won because I think what I was buying was like 420-something. I just shot him a five. I was like, I'm good. No, 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 man, let's talk. I said, you're going to want to back away, guy. You're going to want to back away, bro. And I left it at that. One thing Charleston White say, bro, he say, like they always call him Rat White, Rat White, and there's some shit like that, right? Always talking about him telling on people and everything. He says, "Man, this is like 2024 right now. I don't claim to be no gangster. I'm not from the streets. Like you, damn right, I'm gonna call the cops and tell on you. You know what I mean? So here's the crazy part. It's to the point now where almost every single people person will call the cops and tell on you nowadays. So when you're right. watching this, you think you're going to be hard, you're going to be tough. Man, this shit ain't, this ain't like the mafia movies no more or some gangster shit where people not going to dial 911 on you, man. This is like the time to sit back and relax. You know what I mean? So let me say something real quick. They asked several times how I'm feeling and what I'm drinking on. Yeah, I'm, right. I'm about eight Coronas deep, I guess, right? Because mm. I usually only drink about three, so I'm, I'm feeling good. And I got the... uh spicy michelada and i appreciate everybody man this is my brother right here josh aka rascal from the homie hangout is wax still with us or he tapped no, out wax, wax tapped out i think i heard his okay. phone ringing he probably had to handle some business but so this is my bro josh from the homie hangout man he's got a sure. channel where he talks about california prison prison politics um he talks about recovery he talks about everything from pit bulls to prison so I appreciate it. If you watch this channel and you follow Texas Prison Stories, go check them out and give the homie hangout a follow, man, for real. And I really appreciate it, bro. So you know what? <clears throat> These lives like this are kind of a lot of fun, man, because we get to interact, you know, just kind of get to be ourselves. And I think a lot of people, you know, when you watch a lot of people and their content, they're not actually generally being themselves. They're putting on mm -hmm. an egg, right? So when you get to sit here freestyle, flow back and forth and they get to actually see who you are, and I think a lot of people like it. And shout, look, shout, say, just subscribe to you. Good looking out, shout till I die. I appreciate that.
Oh, somebody. So somebody uh, asked about do SPM's parole, right? And somebody's asking right now about SPM. Man, I don't like that dude. Man, that dude is a, like the biggest black eye in the state of Texas ever, and everybody that supports him is like, I don't, dude, I don't know. How to, it, man, SPM is the biggest black eye ever in Texas right now. And all his fans are just like little black kids all around him. You know what I'm saying? Little nastiness. I don't know how he's, that's, he, that's me he being got, nice, right? He, he's a boil, and then you just got a bunch of little black heads from people. Yeah, yeah, shit. yeah. That's the real deal. So he he's the black he's the he's the staff infection of Texas, <laughs> and his fans are the black heads, right? That's what we'll call them. So they asked about his parole, though. He does come up in October, and uh, when he comes up in October. There is, I don't know how to say this without being sued, right? But in the state of Texas, in the prison system, money money is all, money is king, right? In all court cases and all places, there's somebody that if you're rich enough, you can hire that knows somebody to where you could probably pay your way out of shit, right? We've seen it a million times where celebrities get out of stuff because they've hired people like Johnny Cochran and shit like that, right. they know the judge. Like, they can slide him $100,000. They can do it to the DA and all that. So all I'm going to say is, if there's some type of way, not saying there is, if there was some type of way that an inmate could buy their parole or influence the board or anything like that, he still generates millions of dollars every year, so he could do it, right? Hopefully that's not possible in this case, but if it's possible to influence it through a crooked, corrupt type of way, then he can do that. If that's not possible, if these see the way the parole board works, right? I've never even explained this. The the parole. So if you come up for parole, check this out, rascal, right? So when SPM comes up for parole, it'll be slightly before October. They'll send him what's called the lay in. That's your prison slip telling you where you got to go or whatever. It's going to say lay in parole. By 10, you know, 10, 10 in the morning, 2 p.m. or whatever. So he'll be waiting by the door. They'll call his name, call his name, come and get him because he's in PC, cuff him up, close the whole prison down. Now, real quick with that, he's in, he's in your guy's PC over there. He's not on a PC yard where he's hanging out with people. He's in solitary no. confinement, right? right? Like so, he's basically in, right. in the shoe, like our version right. of the shoe. Right, exactly. So that is PC in Texas. That's why very... Yeah. Very few people volunteer to go to it, right? So they do have something called safekeeping that I don't. We talked about this in the video with CEO Hockley. I don't even remember safekeeping when I was there, right? But it's more of like a wing for transsexuals. It's more like a homosexual, transsexual type of wing where they put those type of people. Mm -hmm. The actual PC, which would be labeled protective custody, it's pretty rare that people go to it and you have to do some type of hearing every six months or whatever. Mm -hmm. Right. So to like say your life is still in danger right. and he definitely. So when you look, so to his fans watching this, this is your hero picture him for every six months for the last 22 years, go telling them white people that his life is in danger and he's scared as hell. This is your gangster rapper hero, right? Right. And hell yes, you can be extorted in the hole. So check it out. So for the board tonight, yeah. do what you so you were saying that the process no, yeah, yeah, when yeah. he goes to board, yeah, yeah, so they bad. pick I'm him good. up in the hole. No, you got right. So so they're gonna pick him up, take him to the little office, close the whole prison down. Like literally, everybody's mm -hmm. gonna have to go get locked in the hallway and shit. So his weird ass can walk to there, right? They're going to interview him, and the person that does the interview on the unit is not the one that makes a decision. The person that does the parole interview is just going to send a recommendation. The recommendation is going to be on your behavior, your demeanor, your appearance, and your remorse. Hmm. All right, so to make this parole, if SPM makes parole in some type of miracle without paying somebody off, then you will guarantee that he went in this interview, admitted guilt, and expressed sorrow. Because that's part of your that's the only way you're gonna get it, right? You have to you have to admit you what you did and express regret. So that's step number one. So if he if this recommendation comes positive, which I'm sure it will, because the man is a professional celebrity, he knows how to present himself and talk when it's time, you know what I mean? 
then they'll send it to the parole person, which is the South Texas region, I believe, is where he's at because he's in Ramsey. Now, this is a three person board. Two people vote first. If they have a split decision, there's a tiebreaker. If okay. they agree, then the third person doesn't vote, right? Hmm. That's so, so to guarantee a parole, like in a crooked type of way, they would have to pay two out of the three, which I don't know if that's even possible. Like, I don't I don't want to put that on anybody, but here's the deal, right? If these parole people approve this man, they're going what what they used to say, Ricky Ricardo used to say, Lucy, you got some splaining right. to do. You got some splain, right? Right. Like, what the fuck did you just uh let this man go for explain so here's yourself. another question for you but what? because you've described uh you and i've said this a million times i could too say one of the reasons i've never made a video about spm is because i think you made the video about him right i've seen a lot of videos about him you made the video about him and so i just point people back to that right when you're sitting in the truck um and, and you were the right person to do it right obviously better than me so in that video you mentioned how there's multiple other cases that he wasn't even prosecuted for because they got him on this first one that they that they ran on does texas have and this might not be something off the top of your head but does texas have statute of limitations on all those charges so all right shot till i die or could it be that he gets granted parole and Texas authorities meet him right there to book him on some of those cases that they never pursued years back the first time around. Uh, so you know what? I don't. Or even does that kind of stuff happen? I know the feds will pick you up when you're done with state time on a fed case, but oh, does Texas oh. like? I've never heard of that in California, where somebody gets parole from the state prison in California, and then gets picked up by law enforcement and recharged with something that they did before they even did that time. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I don't want to lie on that. Right. So I know mm -hmm. that I don't think there's definitely none on, uh, Justin just said that, right. No statute of limitations on murder or rape. He also said Harris sure County. He said Harris Club. County didn't think. So this yeah. was, this is the facts, right? The, the, every one of them, except the nine-year-old was statutory rape mm -hmm. right not necessarily it's chomo activity right but none of them were like child molestation because the victims were voluntarily participating and they were and over the, 14 huh except his except his, for the nine-year-old and except for his baby mama was pregnant when she was 13 right but and i think that will still be the same because here i believe it's 12 and under is when it becomes oh, okay child molestation and aggravated everything until like volun 12 and under they can't volunteer you know what gotcha. i'm saying right but so so that's tricky that's kind of tricky but they're not going to come back and ever prosecute them for that they're, so i don't think that's possible they wouldn't do it anyway like i said the fact that they gave him the fact that they tried him on that nine-year-old was they even said that they this is the crazy part right i believe the da said they weren't 100 percent sure on that conviction but had they lost that trial that they were going to come back and slam dunk them on the 13 year old and they had two more 14 year olds when he was on bond and everything else you know? but that's not even the the craziest part bro so you're Chomo PM or whatever, but do you realize he did an interview with Donnie Houston, which I got a good video. I the only time I've ever told my life story on YouTube is on the Donnie Houston podcast, right? I drove up to Houston to do it for this guy. But SPM did an interview with Donnie Houston where he admitted to the entire time during his career he was convinced that he was HIV positive. So the whole time that he was molesting or, or statutory raping young girls, molesting kids or whatever you want to call it, and sleeping with groupies and grown women and strippers and everything else, partying with his homeboys, he literally thought he had HIV. And he said this so adamantly and several times in the video, right? It's amazing. Like, bro, yes. you got, like, you went from child molester to 
times 10 evil right there. You know what I mean? Like you were just trying to ruin I've everybody. I've actually heard. Country. I don't, I don't know what state it was. And I don't remember what, what, how it was resolved, but I heard years back, uh, that a dude got charged because he knew that he, the allegation was that he knew he was HIV positive and yet he was having unprotected relations, I believe with women, could have been men for all I know, but I'm pretty sure it was with women um, and uh, and not using protection and not disclosing status. And I don't remember if it was like, I think there was a criminal case, but I also think there was a civil lawsuit. I don't, you know, I wasn't paying that much attention to that stuff at the time. This was years back. I'd have to kind of poke around, but. There was a couple guys in my city that did that. They got their case. And I want to say it was, it, so I ain't going to speak on it too much, right? Because I don't want to, there were victims in this, but there was a bunch of them. And these two guys, this was before there was much legislation about this. Like it was mm -hmm. still kind of new. You know what I mean? It wasn't. Mm -hmm wasn't a big deal and they didn't do a bunch of time or anything like this but these guys passed it to quite a few people and they were guys that everybody knew had money and all kind of stuff you know what i mean that's all i'm gonna say about it like literally out of respect for right. the the victims but y'all gotta pay attention look you know uh spm was pretty major back then dog so he rolled into a city he's he's got his pick of these chicks right oh and yeah He's admitting to being convinced that he had HIV. Imagine, now imagine this guy now touching little girls. Like, bro, you're trying. So was it, I'm, I'm assuming, uh, and Justin Chisholm, I'm, I'm liking the comments coming from the Facebook. Uh, uh, that's the test of having what, HIV positive. Okay, 33 counts in 2000. Man, there you go. Uh, and there you go, Siobhan, right? Yeah, so folks, coming. that's the other dope thing about being live is uh, is, is you get people's real-time feedback, right? Uh, and and a lot of times you guys know more than what we know. <laughs> uh, but so uh, it's, I'm, I'm guessing that the folks that he got down with have not actually turned up positive. So I'm guessing that I feel like that was oh, yeah, he came a big out of story. Bro, his his exact words was, I mean, not exact words, but what he said was that until he took his second HIV test in prison, he was 100% convinced that he had it. But here was the hilarious so part, right? That's just a right? perverted mindset. Yeah, no, he's a, so he's a sick fuck, and I, I, this is crazy, yeah. right? But so what I'm saying is he said the reason that he thought he, <coughs> he had and he was convinced in there was because all he wanted to do was lay around and sleep and felt down and shit. Man, they say, man, that's that stressor shit. That was that. That was that. You're a buster way back right. then. You got this time, and then you're just gonna. You what do you say? You see somebody coming to a new jail setting, and all he does is sleep. Hey, man, he he ain't. He already lost respect. Already, you know what I'm oh I'm yeah, you, yeah. That, so he, that time getting the best of you, and you just got here. That's yeah. it. Like either you're yeah. hiding from something. You know, right. maybe you're kicking dope, right? I remember in the county, cats coming in, kicking that, you know, kicking that heroin. They, uh, you know, but they have folks coming around and looking out for them, shit, giving them little Snickers and whatnot, you know, trying to help them through hey, it. Josh, but, I'm going to grab I'm gonna grab another beer. Tell them how to follow you and subscribe and shit. Yeah, yep. <laughs> Shout out to Tim Snow, man. That's my friend in real life. Uh, uh, the homie, hey, for those who just tap it in, right? It's the homie hangout on YouTube and every other social media platform. Uh. I use HOME as an acronym for Help Others Move in Excellence. Uh, I've been to prison, so I talk about that. I've also been to college, so I talk about that. I'm you know, in recovery, so I talk about that. I talk about a lot of shit uh, and have interesting conversations with other people. Um, I, you know, I don't really sweat people for how they did their time. My story is pretty simple. I, I went to prison at 19 for attempted murder. I got validated uh, as a Nuestra Raza Northern Structure prison gang member. And I went to the Corker Sioux and the Pelican Bay Sioux because that's what happened back then. Uh, and I decided as I was heading out of the shoe, I was like, man, I'm going to try to stay out of jail. I started doing time when I was 10 and a half. And so I'm going to see, I don't know if I can do it or not, but I'm going to try. And, and by the grace of God and with the help of my community, uh, 
I, I have stayed out of prison and that was December 9th, 2005 that I walked out. Um, I didn't turn on anybody, you know, I, I just turned to a different lifestyle, man. And, and I don't make any apologies for it. And I think those of us that have done time and done time, quote unquote, the right way in particular, need to normalize that shit. So these youngsters stop feeling like you're expected to behave at 40 the same way you were at 14. Um, that's not healthy in any other aspect of society and it's certainly ain't healthy when it comes to gangs. Gang banging is childish behavior. And, and I don't say that to put anybody down. I was a full participant in it well into adulthood. So I get it. Um, but we got to do better, you know. Uh, but but so I talk about all kinds of stuff over there, you know. Um, and then I have gang files and crime trials. That used to be a channel called Rascal Reacts, right? My name is Joshua. I've been known as Rascal for a long time. So I get called either one. And I'm fine with it. To new people, like in the streets, I don't ever introduce myself as Rascal. But uh, I have people... Uh, Really, I got people subscribe to my channel that that I from every prison I've been to, really. And so, you know, so they see me like, oh man, that's rascal. And and I'm fine with that. But uh, but nowadays I go by Joshua more in, in the real world. Uh but so it used to be called Rascal Reacts, and I would react to other content creators because it seemed like that was kind of a popping thing to do. It's what a lot of other channels were doing. And and you know, I have a little gift to gab and I have some perspective on things, so I, I ran with it, but it it became more drama than what it was worth, even though it got good views. So I switched it to gang files and crime trials. And I'm still just kind of building that up, to be honest. You know, I got like 3,000 subs over there, maybe. Um, but what I, my plan with that is that's not going to be like my own personal stories. That's I, I do legal work. I'm very interested in legal work and how courts work. Um, I, I got a paralegal certificate in prison. I'm a gang expert for defense attorneys on the federal and state level. And I've done tons of immigration cases. So, um, so on that channel, I just want to kind of look at different cases and, and sort of break them down. Uh, one of the big things that I have all the stuff for, I just got to actually do it, is, uh, is the Aryan Brotherhood indictment that was launched in, I believe, 2019 uh, in California against most of the leaders and a lot of the riffraff underling. And so uh, I'm going to be kind of going through that trial. The trial is actually happening right now. Uh, it's like 11 days in, I believe. Uh, but the legal filings and stuff have been crazy. And I think what I'm going to do is, uh, and I know, Tim, we were talking about this. You know, there's not a lot of people, especially as our attention spans get shorter and shorter with stuff like TikTok and Instagram reels and shit. Um, I I want to to tell you guys the story, right? But I, I, I really pride myself on being factual when I run stories. Oh, there you go. Good looking now. I really pride myself on being factual. I don't just spin a bunch of bullshit. So I want to tell the story, you know, kind of like I'm talking now, and, and I'll probably show excerpts of the court filings and the paperwork, you know, just because sometimes they say it better than I can. But I'm not going to read through a 90-page document on YouTube, right? And people are going to tune out. But there are some people who would love to read that 90-page document, who would love to read that motion to dismiss or suppress or, or whatever so uh i have a patreon that i'm just now getting started i'm not real into putting paywalls up to block people from my content i have memberships on my channel but i don't honestly do a whole lot special for the members because i feel like anybody that watches should see what i got going on but what i think i'm gonna do with the patreon and set it up for like a buck a month two bucks a month maybe and i will upload if, if I do a case, I'll upload all the court documents there so that if you want to see them, you can just go there and do it. A lot of that stuff is publicly accessible if you know how to find it and you do the work. But You know what I'm going to say? Hmm. You full of shit, man. Say this guy here. <laughs> this guy here has had this shit. Man, I've talked to this dude like five to ten times. He's told me so much shit that's blowing my mind, y'all. I mean, like literally... Making me go, what the fuck? And and he's got all the information. And he's been stalling out on the content, y'all. We can right. can we come on, man? Can we get the okay. information? Can we get the yes. news? Can we get yes. it? Stop talking about. I, it. Can we get this, bro? I got tons of excuses, man. If you, if you want to hear them all, but um, uh, no, I, I uh, brotherhood trial for somebody right. beat you to it because you got uh, everything that's happens. You got it. You know, I'm actually concerned too because I've mentioned that I have it a few times, and I know that there are some who they read through my comments 
and they get story ideas from that. Or they listen to my lives and I'll watch certain channels that all of a sudden they're doing content about something I just talked about. Hell yeah. Siobhan, that's right, what I'm top. Yeah, hit me off. Uh, I'm I'm very accessible to people. You could DM me on IG, uh, uh, TikTok. I don't look at it as much, but I'm trying to do better. Um, and, and tap it. You can email me, Joshua at the Homie Hangout. Like I try to keep it all pretty simple. Um, hey, I shared our brotherhood videos story. on TikTok for you. My, I did appreciate you that, brother. Thank you. Yes, I did. Thank you. Um, yeah, I've been doing those shorts, like just cutting shorts out of my long form and uh, and running it on there when I feel like there's a real message in there. I I give you my word, man, and I'm saying it publicly, um, and and I'm a man of it. At the latest Monday, I will have uh, an Aryan Brotherhood video up. So I'm gonna cover the trial on gang files and crime trials, but this first video talking about the CDCR working hand in hand with the Aryan Brotherhood to get the legend Yogi Pinnell uh, murdered uh, in 2015. Um, that I'm going to do on the homie hangout because it's specific around police corruption and gangs and stuff. And also to be honest, the homie hangout is a bigger platform, you know? And so that's going to be kind of like my commercial, you know, to my audience of, you know, 20,000, right. whatever subs, Hey, this is an example of what I'm be doing over here. And then well, you know, I'll you know, I'm gonna share it out for you too. So this is the crazy part. I appreciate that. Is uh the info goes deep, it's very intricate, everything is pretty amazing, but you tie it together really well when you told me about it, you know what I mean? So people are gonna enjoy the content, they're gonna like it, and that's more of the shit where people need to see, you know, as to this is not the life you want, right? You don't right. want to come to prison and everything. So these people are idolized. The Aryan Brotherhood, the brand, the right. the rock, whatever you want to call it, right? Say Ace Deuce. These boys are idolized. But in our reality, there's federal indictment after federal indictment with them being sloppy, with them telling on each other, with them cooperating and everything. And I'm not just going after them. That's every gang, every, every family, group. Every, everything, every right? So the is yeah, the, to be clear, I'll talk about like the NF stuff. You know, my history as a, as a northern or thing, I was politic and I was never an NF member, but but I politics. Uh, and and I'll talk about them too. Don't don't get me wrong. I, I, I go at them, I talk about the Mexican mafia. I I got some interesting stuff on the BGF coming up. You know, uh I'm trying to figure out and, and I'm not casting no aspersions, but I think it's interesting. The BGF has been around right about as long as the Nuestra Familia prison gang in California. And the BGF has a lot of stuff in writing, right? They got a constitution. They got all that stuff. It's well documented. It's easy to see. You know, you Google it or whatever. It's been in newspapers and stuff. And that's one of the things they say of why the NF gets indicted so much is because there's such a paper trail because of the paramilitary structure and, and right. the lists right. and all that other shit, right? The BGF is the same way. However, did you know, to the best of my knowledge, and I've done a little bit of homework, the BGF has never been indicted in a RICO case in California. No shit. Never. I did not know. Is, are they moving smarter or are they just doing less? I don't know. So, well, so I, I can kind of answer that independent of, of like whether or not why they've been not been indicted. But they, you know, when Bloods and Crips jumped on the scene, in particular in the 80s, I know their origins are before that, but the really jumping on the scene in the 80s. What's up, Song Life? Good to see you. Um, I hope you're subscribed to Tim's channel. I shared it out on mine too, my community tab. But oh, thank um, you, bro. So I'm seeing some familiar faces. Um, you know, when Bloods and Crips hit the system in California in a real meaningful way, um, in particular the Crips because they have more numbers, but but both that took all the wind out the sails of the BGF. They they wasn't nobody trying to hear all that. Right. And and they and also because their origins, their origin story, just like every prison gang in California. Right. Um, they there's this romantic ideology. Right. We're going to fight against the man, stick it up for the people, brotherhood, all this other stuff. And they turn into some goons, bro, just like every other group. Right. Just like every other group. And. And so they lost that moral high ground that they might have had during the 60s because times changed. Come the 70s, bro, it's pimping and, and, and popping collars. And then the 80s just shoot everything moving and shell crack. 
So, so they lost that, um, and and really never regained it. Now there are some individuals uh, associated with the BGF that are stand up, solid people. So I'm not saying that all of them. I don't cast with a broad brush. I don't paint with a broad brush. You know, individuals are individuals, but in Texas. In Texas, we had the Mandingo Warriors that was probably mm -hmm. real similar to the BGF, and same thing happened to them, right? Like right. the in our reality, a lot of the black people that was in prison, for one, didn't want to join a gang. Period. They weren't fascinated. They that weren't intrigued too. by it, and they didn't see a benefit, so they never became a majority, right? They were stone cold killers. Like the the Mandingo Warriors was some of the hardest of the hard yeah. black men, and when they got together, that's pretty scary, right? You're like, oh, these are the baddest motherfuckers in the prison. Now mm -hmm. they're all linked up, but it's not everybody in the prison. But when the Bloods and Crips come through, that pretty much these guys were coming in already as a member of something. They right. weren't looking to join something. Same thing out there, you know what I mean? So yeah, it it, it did the exact same thing well, here. So in the early days. days can you yeah. read that comment I pinned right there? Somebody wants to know the relationship Question. between the Crips, Bloods, and the BGF. So are they just totally separate cars, no interaction? Do they interact or what? So, so good question. Uh, each car is their own. Again, you don't find very many BGF, even with letting all these dudes out uh, of the shoe. There just frankly wasn't very many of them back there. Now, the ones that were back there, for the most part, have been back there for decades and decades and decades. But numbers-wise, there wasn't a steady influx of black dudes being validated as BGF. It just wasn't right. As opposed to with, you know, with the other groups. Um, so, but yes, each group has their own car early on. Uh, the BGF would not accept people that were bloods or crips on the streets. Um, they wound up kind of pulling back from that a little bit because pretty soon, damn near every fucking black dude coming into the system was a blood or crip. So you just, you just ignore that. So um, they softened up a little bit on that. And, uh, but like if they were all on a yard, um, as long as there's enough tables, you would see a, a, a blood table, a crypt table, a BGF table, a Muslim table. A lot of those old BGF dudes became Muslim um, and, and rock with the Muslim car, which is a, a, a significant population in prison. And not always numbers wise, but like that's that's a car. Oh, the Muslim car is a real car. Yeah, yeah. Let me ask you about that, right? Because I've never heard a California content creator, a Hispanic one, never. Like you know, so Gunners Collect. These are the ones I know about, right? Uh, stories written by a current prisoner, Gunner. There was uh, Faco Rojo, Boxer, you. I just recently found out about that Dubs dude because uh, he was rocking with Gunner. Uh, and so that's about the main ones I can really think of, right? I know there's probably Renegade, more. Renegade yeah, Media. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Well, I, so he I know actually got more, more numbers than all the numbers, but mm -hmm. I don't think I ever really watched a video of his. You know what I'm saying? Right. So these are the ones that I've actually just watched content of. Oh, okay. not, I, I said that wrong, right? Not that I've not. Definitely heard of Renegade. I've heard of some of the. Other yeah, guys. I thought you were just trying to name all the ones you'd heard of, but no, I get what no, you're so saying. I said yeah. that wrong, and I'm sorry. I apologize. But these are the guys that I've watched before because they've mm -hmm. been around a long time, right? Some of the new people that popped up, I just kind of never right. really watched. But I've never heard any of them ever say a word about the Muslim car out there. It's real strong in Texas, and it's real strong in the feds. What's it like in California? There are a bunch of them. Black strong. Muslims. Strong, yeah. So mostly black. I'll tell you a fun quick story. Actually, I'll probably make a video with this story, but I'll tell it here first. Uh, so we had this dude come in who was a Latino dude from the county, right? This was Salon on level three, right? California got four levels. Level one being the lowest, not even a fence, pretty much. Um, level two, you're probably dorm living, unless you're one of real old prisons. and uh, But you don't have to be up under a gun in the housing unit. That's kind of the big thing with level twos. Level threes, you're up under the gun in the housing unit and, of course, on the yard. Um, cell living, there's no dorms. And, and then level four is, is just a heightened version of a level three with a, a little bit of a different caliber. And then there's other nuances, too, but I, I don't want to get too off in that. But so uh, I started out as a level three, and then I got in trouble, and I became a level four, and I went to the shoe. 
on the level three yard, um, there was a deep Muslim crowd. I was at Solano, right? And uh, all right, good night, Super King Anthony. And uh, the Muslim crowd was pretty deep there. And some of those Muslims, just to put in context, you had Muslims in there that had killed multiple police officers, right? Um, these were dudes that were sentenced to death in the state of California prior to the moratorium on the death penalty in the 70s, I believe it was, right? Um, so they were on death row previously, but then got off death row. Now they've been down all that time. So their points dropped. They'll never go lower than a level three because they got to be under a gun at all times. But, but so these are righteous killers, right? Um, there's a dude from the Black Panthers that I became really close friends with from East Palo Alto. He's the one that put me up on all, a lot of the Panther literature, right? Which is the same stuff that a lot of the PGF dudes read, but the George Jackson stuff and the Johnny Spain and all that, like he put me up on all that, which is contraband material. But so uh, I, I had a great relationship with a few of those dudes, right? It's um, contraband material for real, banned books. Yeah, yeah, those books were banned. And so um, he had them tucked in between legal work and a manila envelope. But so like Chicago, uh, you know, he had killed a cop. He was from Chicago. He had killed a cop. He was a Panther. Now he ran Muslim. Pops actually read a wrote his writ of habeas corpus from death row on toilet paper with a pencil and um and he uh you know he was over there right that was chicago's dad so this latino dude comes and he's labeled as a northern he's labeled as a northern mexican right by by the department of corrections and he says hey man uh i'm muslim right i'm muslim um and I got a homeboy. He got killed in prison a, a few years back, right? North Daniel dude, solid. Got killed, dirty politics. He was a practicing Muslim, but he ran with, with the homies. He didn't run with the Muslims, but he went to religious services with Muslims, but he programmed on the yard as a North Daniel, not a Muslim. This dude was like, I'm a Muslim. I'm not a Northerner. I'm, I'm a Hispanic from Northern California, so I'm labeled a Northern Hispanic by the administration. But I'm, I don't bang. I'm not from a hood. I'm not nothing. And before he was able to program with the Muslims, they came and got at us. And I was actually, this was a conversation I'd had, so I, you know, I could speak to it. And they were like, hey, man, what's up with old boy? Right, what's up with this dude? I was like, I don't know. He says he's a Muslim, man. You guys can have him. Like, we ain't tripping like that, right? And he's like, okay, well, look, we're going to check his paperwork. They check paperwork. We're going to check his paperwork, slide it over to you. We need you guys to give us the green light to embrace him. Because what we don't want is, which I was young in the system. And, and it was actually a learning experience for me. There's these OG black dudes that kind of taught me something. Because I was like, oh, well, if he says he's a Muslim, I don't care what his name is. I don't care where he's from. I'm not running no background check on him because he's not my people. He's the Muslims people. You guys do that shit. Then they came to me and was like, okay, look, we need you. We need you guys to run your, you know, northerner background check like like you normally would. They know y'all do see, it better, huh? Right. Well, to see if his background's clear, because he says what we don't want is we embrace this dude. And they never rejected him, but they very much kept him at arm's distance. And they said, we don't want to embrace this dude as one of us. And then two months later, one of your homeboys drives up on a yard and was like, oh, I was with that dude in the county and he PC'd up or, or whatever else. Right, right. We are right, not right. going to be a shield for this dude's behavior. So we need the okay from you because when you guys tell us, nah, man, that dude's cool. Like he ain't got no history with us. We got no beef with him. Then we, cause we're going to back his play to death if, if, if he has an issue. So to avoid the potential for that before we embrace him, Let's make sure that he's all the way okay on your guys' terms. And then we'll do our own thing. And and so it turns out dude had no criminal history. It was his first time in jail. He went to the county jail. He was spooked. And and some Muslim brother wound up getting in his ear. He, he built a report and, and he converted. So more power to him, right? Um, and and that was that. Uh, but, but so they, just to give you some insight, and they really function. They really know the ropes. And... Uh, the Muslim card doesn't get off very often. Um, but from what I've heard, in fact, I've never seen the Muslim card get off, to be honest. I've never seen them in a riot or anything else. 
but from what I have heard from them, uh, Evan Mowbray, that's why I lived in East Palo Alto for years. We might know hey, that's, the same that's, that's like literally probably my biggest supporter. Well, mm. one of the one of the three biggest supporters that my channel's ever had right there, bro. Like, man, mm -hmm. we love some Eva. Like, she's literally sent money before just to take my daughter to the park. Wow. Like, to the rainforest thing. Uh, that's dope. Man, bro, she's so that's dope. dope crazy right like i never hey one day i sent her some bread and said go have lunch you know what i'm saying <laughs> she, said, she said she cried i even listen to this even from the bottom of my heart please stop sending that right i'm working mm. right now everything's fine i appreciate it i love you so much but and spend it on yourself you know what i mean i, I mean that too mm. but so she said her her husband was uh 415 that's the kumis is that that's what the kumis yeah, so so Are BGF. No, no, so BGF uh changed their name to Jama, right? Family in, in Swahili, in the dialect of Swahili that they speak. There's a bunch of them. But uh and then 415, they changed their name to Kumi, which is just the number 10 in Swahili, which four plus one plus five is ten. What four one five was was honestly the BGF's attempt to stop and it, and it was highly successful to stop the blood crip movement from coming into the Bay Area in the black community. Now we have Polynesians that were Bloods and Crips in, in San Francisco, Oakland, the Bay Area. You had uh, Asians that was Bloods and Crips, right? Um, but black Bloods and Crips, very, very few. When I was young, I was born in 77. When I was young, there were some, some Blood and Crip hoods in, in like San Francisco, Oakland, the Bay Area proper. But those were kind of wiped out quick. The people weren't wiped out, but that affiliation was wiped out. And right. they went back to just claiming their spot off from Double Rock or off from, you know, uh, Potrero Hill, right, or, or whatever, um, and, and kind of gave that up. Now, the BGF influence, in, in particular with the 415, right, obviously, was the Bay Area. So you do have black bloods and crips in stockton black bloods and crips in sacramento which is north of the bay area fresno you have black bloods and crips in northern california a lot of times people will say that you don't and it's just not true and you have a history of black bloods and crips in the bay but they don't exist anymore like seven with the exception of seven trees was a crip neighborhood in san jose but you'll find individuals in fact i had somebody argue on my live one time and they're from, I don't think they're from East Palo Alto, but they knew some people over there. And they were like, man, they got bloods in EPA. They got bloods in EPA. You need to cut it out. They have two bloods in EPA, uh, Blood James and his brother. I know them both. I lived around the corner from them. But they're not, there's no blood gang in EPA. They are two dudes that got picked up with the blood someplace else. But they're that's what I say when I'm talking them. about Nortenos and Sudanios in Texas. Mm -hmm. Like, there ain't no gang, but there's probably some here. You know what I mean? Let me yeah. ask you something that I always wanted but to shout out Eva. That's dope. Yeah, yeah. Much love to Eva. Uh, that's hometown right there. Lives in El Paso now, I think, for sure. Uh, what would have happened when you was there if some Mexican dude would have showed up and said he was Pyro or he was a crip from East Palo Alto or something? Like, what would have happened to him? I've never saw... We hear stories about Snow Rock. We hear stories mm -hmm. about uh, Goldie. We hear stories about Wack Deuce. We hear stories about a couple white Crips, but I don't think I ever heard about a Mexican Hispanic Crip on a, on a level four in California. Have you? I've never seen one, but I can tell you if they're from Northern California, then I haven't even seen one from Southern California. Um, but if they're from Northern California, when I was in there, Right, politics change. I think this would still ring true, but but I can really only adamantly speak on my time. Uh, cool, rock with them. If you say you're a crib, cool, go over there with the cribs. See, the thing is, though, no matter what race you are, if you're a crib, you rock with the crips, which by extension means you rock with the blacks. Right. Of so course. I would see. Cause you, we would have Asians like we'd have little Vietnamese cribs, Filipino bloods, and like hella Asians that was blooding and cripping all throughout the Bay, Bay Area, right? And they would really just beef with each other for the most part, kill each other. Um, but they catch cases, obviously they come to prison. Well, that they belong in the other car by their 
by their name, by their racial ethnic makeup. Right. They belong with the mm-hmm. natives, with the Usos, with you know the the. What would you see them doing when they got there? Would they go with their people, got, or would they stay cripping? So they got two choices, from my understanding of talking to some of the others, and in particular some of the Asian ones. Um, you either ride with your gang. If you're going to ride Crip, that's cool. You go over there with the Black Crips. If you're going to ride other, you ain't involved in no Crip business. You ain't nothing. You ride with us. Because, again, if if I'm an other and my celly is an other just like me, he's of my same racial makeup, but he claims that he's a Crip, and he winds up getting himself in some issues over Crip shit happening on the yard, now the other's got to be involved because he's he's with us so you can't have competing loyalties so but, you know we actually had that problem without being understood and fixed at the time when i was in prison where we had a bunch of crips that was muslims too and mm-hmm. it was it was convoluted to say the best right it it made shit complicated because this homie right here might have to ride with these muslims but this is how it would work, right? So, hey, yeah, you're a crip. If you get caught up in some Muslim business, then that's this is what mm-hmm. it is. We can sit our ass down and see what happens, right? If you get caught up in like some crip type business, then you know we we're gonna take care of it. But the business was totally separated, right? Like, and then all all this did was make prison double dangerous for whoever that was. Right. Right, because now you got like two you got two, you know, you might get into right. it like two cars might crash your out ass out. You know what I mean? Like this is not the life you want. No, and see in California, that'd be less likely to happen because you like I said, you're kind of silo. So you have individuals like I had I had a homeboy, little rascal, uh, like I said, who who was a Northanio out of Pittsburgh. Um, that was my dude, he got murdered on some punk shit. And uh, I actually made a post about it on Facebook before I was on YouTube. And I made a post about it when he got killed. And some folks hit me up, right? Like, hey, man, you can't be saying that. I so fuck you. So now, anytime I mention him, I always mention that he got killed behind fuck shit. And I don't care who uh, disagrees with it. But um, he was a practicing Muslim. So like I said, he would go to Muslim services, right? He would get the Muslim diet. But he wouldn't go sit at the Muslim table, right? So there's really no opportunity for him to get into Muslim issues because he's not on the yard kicking it in a in a in a friendly, cool kind of way. Just like if you and I were on the yard together, we know each other. I'm like, oh man, that's Tim Snow, man. That's the crip homie. Like we kick it and talk, but but I got my little spot, you got your little spot. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. If we and ran so- into each other in a prison down mm-hmm. here, we probably wouldn't talk too much. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? I I right. wave at you and shit. And, right. and I mean, if we're on the same wing or whatever, mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. I, I probably like nah. So we're not even gonna talk very much because where mm-hmm. you sit and where I sit ain't gonna be the same. Where you play your little dominoes or whatever you do, and I do mine, ain't gonna be the same. Like when we go to chow, that's not gonna be the same. Now, where we might talk. Is mm-hmm. if we're both at work doing the same job, right? right? We're both in laundry or we're both working in the chow hall or something like that. But, or like I said, the sales here aren't segregated. So, hell, it's mm-hmm. possible you might be my cellmate. See, in, in California, we, you would have your own, like the Crips would have it. And it all, how it's divided up kind of depends on the population, right? It's, it's, there's only so many tables available. So, right. some yards, you may just have a Crip table. Some yards you may have a, a up north crib table and a down south crib table, and you you know it just kind of depends. But uh, I've never seen a place where it's like Bloods and Crips don't have their own tables. I've, I've never seen the numbers that kind of lopsided. But in California, we sure we got our 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 northern tables, and you got let's say we got four tables on the side of the day room. It may be like, look, this table is just ours. This table is just the brothers. These two tables is mixed black and northerners. Like so, it's if there was only four tables, right? Uh, then you know we have one dedicated to us, and the blacks have one dedicated to them, and then the other two is kind of like whoever gets their first type shit. But so we could sit at the same table and play dominoes, 
we we would be watching the same TV on the same side of the yard. We would be sharing the same phones. Right. That's good. When we go to Chow, right. yeah, yeah. When when we go to Chow, of course, I'm gonna try to set the table with with my folks, and you're gonna try to set the table with your folks. But it's possible D- different prisons work different in how they do Chow. But we could wind up at the same table. Really good chance we wind up at tables that are right next to each other because our rows is. Right. Do y'all it's, it's do like there. they do in Texas where y'all just file in line to the chow hall and you fill up the next table? So we could, we just, you got to get in line. As you get your tray, you walk down and fill up the next row, fill up right. the next row. Like So we'll walk with our people to chow, but whoever the first guy was and the last guy was, he might mess around and sit with the Mexicans. He might mess around and sit with the white dudes. You know what I mean? Well, and that's why, so we, the way that we're staggered is, if we messed up and didn't have a seat with the Northerners, it'd be with the Blacks. It would, there's no chance of us sitting at a table with the Woods, no chance of us sitting at a table with the South Siders. But it depends. So, like, Solano, you could sit where you wanted to. Right? You didn't have to sit at the first seat available. Salinas Valley, which was a level four, you did. And so there was a lot of math going on in line where you're kind of counting the heads up ahead and, and okay, we're going to line up this way. Uh, there, there was some strategy involved in in that. So we might see a brother and be like, hey, boy, you can go ahead because we, you know, we're linking up right here. And they'll be like, all right, cool. You know, it don't matter to him. Right. Uh, hey, but- one of my one of my viewers, and let's say she's she's VIP tonight. Whatever comments she <laughs> say, whatever comments she does, mandatory. Her and Eva are the two that's mandatory respond back, right? She gotcha. said, Snow, what's the better choice? But I don't know what you – I'm buzzed like a motherfucker. I'm starting to get drunk now, for real. What are you mm. talking about, the better choice? But, like, who to ride with or something? Do you know what she's asking? No. No, I did a I did a short um, where I said there's there's four futures in the criminal lifestyle. Uh, three of them were pretty shitty. There was only one of them that made sense, and that's walk away clean and early as possible and, and move on with your life. But – I don't, I've seen her, oh, like if someone's oh, an Asian oh, crit, oh. if someone's an Asian crit, what's the better oh, hold on. Can I answer Asian that? Crit? Can yeah. I answer that since I'm the goddamn white yeah. crit? Right. Oh. She was asking you. <laughs> the answer is who, so whoever you will feel most comfortable with, that's the answer. Mm. So there are, check this out, there's Asian crips that live in Asian neighborhoods, they're part of an Asian gang. And as he just told you, they're killing Asian bloods and shit like this, right? They're part of a quote unquote black gang, which is the Crips, Mm -hmm. but they're functioning purely Asian. You understand? Hold on, let me turn that camera off. So they're functioning purely Asian. So those guys would probably go in and just say, I'm riding with the Asians. You know what I mean? But if that Asian crip was from a black neighborhood, a black set where he was a 100% fooling with black people, black crips fighting black bloods, then more than likely he's going to go be a crip, you know? So it's just who, who you're more comfortable with, period. If you're a white guy that's hung around black people, you'll probably be with some black people, you know? So, so here's the thing too. If you're a white person, they grew up at a black school, hanging with black people, might even in a black gang. Do you really actually want to go ride with the white people? Like, that's going to probably hate on you. They're going to be like, want to be the wigger. You know what I mean? Like, do you really want to, these guys, you trust these people and all that? And the fact is, racist people hate it when I say this, right? Think about it like this, Josh. I don't know. So California is pretty different, right? Y'all are pretty divided in the South anyway. The North, not really. We know that. So Mm -hmm. Southern California. If there's a black neighborhood in Texas and a white person moves into it, nobody's going to say much anything to them, right? You can live pretty peacefully. They're going to be like, damn, white dude crazy. He moved into the hood, blah, blah, blah. And that's going to be about the end of it. But one black person moving to an all white neighborhood and it's a fucking problem. Like right. he's gonna get pulled over. They're gonna be having people pull up to him while he's at the community mailbox with their phone out. Where are you what are you doing here? You know what I mean? We see it all the time on YouTube, right? Hundred percent. Well, it works the same way inside of the gangs in prison and all that shit, right? You you show up as a white crip 
white blood, Asian crip, Asian blood, they're going to be hundred times more likely to accept you. They might be skeptical. They might, uh, might, it might not be the same as you as a black person, but they're going to be way more accepting than if you were even with the white guys probably and showing up as a white guy with a black wife or a white guy with a black kid or something. They might listen in the rap music, anything. Yeah. 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 So I showed up in prison with gold teeth and crypt tattoos. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like permanent gold teeth that don't right. come out that I had for 20 some years. So right. there was no like other choice for me. You know what I mean? But I never regretted it and I never had any problems about it, really. It was I mean, so every time I've been to jail, I've been jumped at least one time, though. You know, mm. like that just is what it is. And that's for a lot of different reasons for me, me fucking doing so i never got jumped by my own people or nothing like that right. but yeah no so i've been jumped by eight white dudes in the county mm. me and my homeboy rigo got jumped by about 15 fucking bloods from parkland and galveston uh several times four mexican d-town tangos in the feds mm. like i've i've definitely felt all ramifications from it right but it was right. never some black guys jumping on me if you want to know the truth right it was always some fucking whites or mexicans but they would always find the other reason to do it other than he's a white crip. Right. Right. Cause that right, they can't fly. say that. Right. You can't that say that. Right. Yeah. 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 That's unacceptable. Right. Oh, you mean you whooped him because he's a fucking any kind of crip that don't work. Mm -hmm. So they'll find a different reason, you know, and right. it is what it is. And so I'm, I, I'm the one that says this ain't the life you want. Right. Last time I fought four dudes on the yard, they broke my fucking shoulder, fractured yeah. my ribs. Had my face looking about this big, black eyes, busted mm -hmm. lips, you know, and my daddy came to visit me and see me like that, bro. That was one of the mm -hmm. hardest things in my life okay. was I had tough to my daddy, right? I'm right. not one of the men right. that call home and go, it's rough in here, mama. I'm right. scared. You know what I mean? No, I call home and go, hey, mom, hey, dad, I'm cool. Everything's fine. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And then I got to write and tell him, hey, cancel that visit next week. I got jumped on him in the right. hole. Yeah. You know, don't come. And my dad's silly ass pulls right up. Well, you, you just told him, don't come. I got jumped. He's like, bro, I'm trying to shoot yeah, myself. Yeah, but I also said, I'm okay, right? right. I'm fine, yeah. man. Hey, I don't feel like having no visit, but here goes the deal. But as a parent, though, I, that's, that was a good move. I think that was a dad I move. Right I there. understand. Love my pops, right? Totally mm -hmm. understand. But that was humiliating as a grown ass man, yes. bro. I was fucking, how old was I, man? I was like, 37 years old, 36 mm -hmm. years old, something like that. I was big as hell, lifting weights, strong. I'm telling my pops when I when I got to go to court and turn myself in, hey, I love you, Dad. I got this. Don't worry about it. You know what right. I'm saying? And then I got to write them this letter saying, man, they caught me slipping. But don't right. worry about it. I'm all right. Right? And I so I guess, bro, he had came to visit before and knew shit had happened. Right? Like, you, mm -hmm. you know somebody got a bruise on them fucking they got right. a little cut or something or anything like that so but i would never say anything right like just the same way as i told that viewer earlier if you're beat inside of a prison something happened to you, you're expected to say to the police oh i fell in basketball I fell. or right. i fucking fell out my bunk or something so mm -hmm. i would always do that to my family you feel me like oh shit granny i just fell out the bunk or something right. so they would know i was lying Mm -hmm. But so when I actually, I guess when I actually wrote, wrote and said, hey, something happened, you know, but just don't worry, I'm fine. I'm back here and shit. Everything's cool. I guess since it was the first time out of three right. fucking beds that I ever said anything happened, it scared my dad. Right. Sure. So, but it was humiliating. Like how bad must it be yeah, for him to actually say it? Yeah. Bro, it was fucking humiliating to have to say it because I don't think that's right. I do believe all men that do any fucking amount of time should always tell their friends family and everybody except their little brothers that don't count right i mean the women tell the women tell your dad pops everything's fine oh, when you cool. get out tell your little brother and the little homies hey man this shit suck right? right but what i'm saying is don't scare your family right always try to play like it's cool be a man about shit. so yeah it's that bad enough it's bad that enough that they're doing a the time with you yeah, bro, I fought four dudes on the yard, and I barely got a chance to fight back. These motherfuckers stomped the shit out of me because in the feds, you wear them uh, fiberglass composite toe shoes, right? And they're kicking me with these basically steel toes. It was pretty oh. bad. 
But none of that, that wasn't humiliating, right? That wasn't embarrassing. That's just prison life. That's right. me doing what I do. My dad coming to see me in that visitation room, that was embarrassing, mm. dog. Like, man. man, I was like, I've been playing, like, every, and everything was fine, but I can't tell Pops, no, don't worry no more. Like, man. now he's seeing what can happen, and he's looking at me. I always remember the TV show Martin. You remember Martin? Yeah. Yeah. You remember yeah, when he got his ass whooped and his head oh, was yeah. about that big? <laughs> That's how I looked, though. For real, yeah. I was pumping head. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out, Martin. That's right. What's up, Al Gore? I see you, homie. Um, Al Gore. You know, that's one of the things that I wanted to talk to Wack about when, when I have him on the channel is I've heard stories um, about white dudes that came into prison claiming a black gang essentially right claiming to be a blood or a crip from from a black hood and the white dudes pack them out and get rid of them and the brothers don't really do nothing about it and but i've also heard that there are few and and whack is one of them snow rock is another one um uh, that dude you mentioned, Goldie Locks. I, I heard him or Goldie. Yeah, Goldie. Um, uh, there's another yeah. Rob Dog, homeboy Rob Dog. Shout out to Rob Dog. There's a few of them, you know. Yeah. Uh, so that's man for Portrait Gangster Crip. Yeah, there's a few of them white dudes that are famous, man. Right. Yeah. It's and it's rare because they. That means that their people embrace them. See, the and I'm sure to some degree it's somewhere out in Texas, right? But you. There was the era, and to some extent, the era is still there, uh, of just being a fashionable blood or crip. And so I think you had some white dudes from, you know, catching cases that they viewed themselves as a blood or a crip, but they wasn't really tied into any neighborhood, right? Or maybe they lived in the 60s, but they wasn't put on a set. They wasn't put on nothing. They just lived there, and then they catch a little dope case, and they're like, well, fuck, I'm going to ride with the 60s because that's where I live. Right. But they're a white dude, and and the brothers is that my understanding. But that's why I, you know, whack and, and snow rocking them would know way better than me. That's what I want to talk to them about because I've always been curious. Um, but I've talked to some brothers about it in prison, and and they're like, Look, buddy, just because you're a white dude coming in here claiming to be from whatever, that don't mean that the whole car gonna go sacrifice for you. You know what I mean? Like, we right. we program it over here so. Then it wasn't a fear thing ever. It was never a thing of like, oh, we're scared of the woods, right? Uh, but, you know, the AB, up until the end of hostilities, when they got out, and actually, uh, I think it was Willie Silverstein actually said this in a, I have a transcript of a conversation that he had with, with the gang task force sitting in the day room in Folsom. Reckless ass conversation. But, uh, you know, he, in that, he actually said, look, uh, we had a standing policy that we would never program on the yard with whites that run with blacks. And because of the end of hostilities, we've, we've let that go. We will allow them to program now without kicking it off. Now keep in mind that AB been off the yards for a very long time prior to that. So it wasn't like anybody really gave a shit what they thought, but, but I do think there's instances where white dudes have come to prison claiming to rock with the brothers and the brothers are basically either outwardly or just by default kind of been like man we ain't crashing out over this fool and and but there are those that are different in solano there was no i say dude. listen let me stop you so that's what happened with me right that's why so if y'all want to hear the whole story it's the tongo blast versus tim snow i got the mm. video where them fools jumped on me my homeboy big c right big c was so big c was a crip don't get me wrong, and I was too. That was the bond that made us to be friends, right? Like, we were very close, still are. But we weren't on no crip shit, like, when I'm fixing to tell you. Like, this wasn't no gang activity that this guy was on because we were in the feds where gangs didn't really matter where we were. It was more geographical, right? But when that right. happened, so I heard the entire story wrong. If you want to know the truth, because I heard the story in the whole, I heard the gossip and the rumor and all that shit, right? I get to uh with C again, and he's talking about he don't want to talk about it and all this shit. But I finally got him to come do the interview with me. And when he tells the interview, 
by that time I had heard the story, but I'm literally letting him tell it. You know what I'm saying? So when I got jumped on, they locked the whole prison down because now it's interracial. They know I'm right. the white guy with the black seats, Hispanic did and everything. Well, C come back to the to the dorm with a homeboy from from uh, originally from Galveston, right, with the use of car and basically pulls out a sword, calls everybody I say, who whichever one of you fucking Mexicans did that shit. Come on right now. Fuck these politics. Fuck this shit is what he's thinking. You know what I'm saying? Fuck talking to your shot caller. Right. Fuck this. He say, Tim's my brother. Come on down and handle this fucking business. And nobody replied and nobody came on down. This man, now he's six foot four, 280 with a big ass sword. And he's serious. Nobody in their right mind is going to come down. You know what I mean? And that's was so when that happened, they locked the whole prison down, not because of that, because of what I happened. And when they finally go to the rec yard, C was he had just did 12 years state time, right? Which is totally differently ran than the Fed. So he was still more on some state time. When they call the shit to talk to these guys, speaker, shot caller, whatever you want to call them, on the yard, they're thinking, well, C is coming to speak for me, right? Like he's the only fucking one there. That is really saying I'm I'm representing fucking Tim. He just got whooped. He's in the fucking hole. I'm doing it. And it wasn't on no crip shit. It wasn't on no white black shit. None of that. It was on some. He's my real fucking friend. Like right. we really sit in each other's fucking cell. We really smoke. We really fucking talk about our goddamn family. Like I know about his grandma and his fucking crazy ass girlfriend he had. And you know what I mean? Like I know fucking C's wife. Like this is not some gang shit dog this is like some man to man shit this is why i will always love this man right so he goes on to the fucking yard they're thinking they're about to politic this shit out their shot callers saying oh he was the wrong dude we didn't mean to get to him right it was supposed to be somebody else mm. well he calls the motherfucker out on a one-on-one -on -one fight which probably would never even happen because the guy's got the fucking rank the dude starts stuttering and I, if, if I remember right, I'm buzzed like a mother. I think he slapped the shit out of him on the rec yard. You know what hmm. I mean? So, like the very next day to this, I'm seeing the dude that called the fucking shot on me. He's back in the hole now. He didn't have to hmm. check in, dog. You know what I mean? Hmm. Like, he did not want to fucking fade right. my fucking homie. He called the shot on me, right? Hmm. This dude said, fuck prison politics. Fuck everything that y'all say. Fuck all this shit we're going straight to the root of the problem right and that right. dude couldn't fucking handle this fucking six foot three six foot four big strong ass crazy ass black dude fucking in his right. face right then that's what i'm saying so a lot of times when we say prison politics keeps a lot of motherfuckers safe but at that same time see life was in danger for doing that shit. right you know what I'm sure. saying? Like, his life sure. was in fucking danger for doing this shit, but he loved the motherfucking man enough on some real, hey, we're locked in this dangerous fucking place, dog. You got my back. I got your back. Like, right. we're on this wing together. There's only fucking about four of us that feel like this, right? So I will always have the ultimate respect for him, but nobody else in the car or anything else was pushing that issue like him. They were telling him, calm down. Let's politic hmm. this shit out and all this right. shit. He he was so much of a state inmate, he didn't even know what the fuck politic this shit out. What do y'all mean? Like this right. is blood for blood type shit, right? right? And it was it was a whole crazy story, like real talk, dog. Like so, no, yeah, I was part of the black car, but no, the entire black car didn't want to go to war for me type shit. Right. But you know, so they also probably wouldn't have went to war for each other though. It wasn't specifically because I was a white boy. You know right. what I mean? I I kind of created the problem, right? No, ain't mm -hmm. no kind of. So I created the problem that got my ass beat. Therefore, I got my ass beat. And that was right. about the end of it. Right. But you C paid the price for it. Because yeah. we was friends, right? right. And he, that's all I'm saying. So, yeah, it's... This sure, ain't nobody going to punish my friend. You give a fuck what he right. did. Right. That's it. <laughs> right. That's right. That's right. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Right. So that's Every all it was. I guess I explained it to the end right mm -hmm. there. You know, so I deserve not saying I deserve what I got because I was trying to save somebody. I get taken out. Mm -hmm. He stands up, you know, but hey man, it fuck all that shit, right? It gets it does. It's well it's, it's the so two things real quick. I there was a white dude in Solano 
And I think I think that's the only time that I personally saw a white dude that programmed with the blacks. And he was from Vallejo. And there wasn't no gang shit. But he was really from Vallejo. And uh and and I swear he had like a black relative or something, you know. Uh but but he said no. Nah. He quiet dude, big dude, uh, but quiet. And and this happened, I guess, right before I came there. He pulled up shortly before me, so I wound up hearing the story. Um, and that's my first main line. So I got, you know, I'm curious about shit that I'm seeing. And I'm like, oh, it's a white dude that kicks it with the brothers. Like, but this, you got all these white dudes over here with all this, you know, racist stuff scribbled all over them. So how does that work? And they had went to the to the Bay Area blacks, and uh, and I was a Northern California prison. A lot of people were from Northern California, regardless of their race. Um, see, we have more blood from Sacramento than we did down south at that yard. And so, uh, but he was from Vallejo. He wasn't gang banging. He's just from Vallejo, right? Grew up with the brothers and made the decision. I'm in prison. I'm not gonna run with the whites. I don't know none of those dudes, but I know some of these black dudes from Vallejo. I'm really from there, and. The wife was like, hey, bro, that dude, we're going to need a piece of that dude. He can't, you know, we ain't going to let him. It, it's an embarrassment, right? It's it's an embarrassment to the woods in their mind. Right. I don't think it's a big deal. But in their mind, it's an embarrassment to have somebody of their race that is choosing to go rock with a different group. Especially hey, because. I don't understand, though. Listen, you hmm. kept it real. You said, hey, if a fucking Hispanic from the North comes and said he's blood, crip or whatever, Muslim. Hmm. That's their fucking business now. Why really? are the goddamn woods out there so serious? Like, because why, their why foundation. Is it still their fucking business is what I'm saying. Well, so when a white man is in a different car, why is they still because the insult? Because their whole narrative is they are the superior group, right? Like that's what they tell each other, right? Like we're the superior people. Well, you still fucking superior, and how come that guy who's one of you wants to be with them? Right. It's a it's a slap in the face, right? Like maybe you ain't the coolest fucking people in the world. Uh which doesn't mean you're not the coolest, but you know, but just it, that person obviously ain't buying into your whole racial superiority shit because he's kicking on another race. So I think that's their thing, it's a little ego here. It's embarrassing them. Uh, it's yeah, it's just embarrassing them. Um uh, and but so uh so anyways, this dude was like, I'm gonna rock with the blacks because that's who I grew up with. I don't give a fuck. And the brothers told the woods, look, uh, you could run up on him, right? You want to run up for a head of fade. You want to go in a cell with them? Uh, no problem. He'll go in a cell with any one of you. Uh, but but we're not getting him off the yard, and he's one of us, and that is what it is. And a couple of the white dudes took up the invitation to the cell fight, and apparently they lost the cell fight to where the woods was like, fuck it, we just got to leave him alone because they couldn't whoop him. And, and they didn't want to make it. A racial thing, like they weren't gonna lay the yard down over it. Um, them brothers would have stomped the daylights off them dudes. So, uh, so they let it go. But now, I know of dudes like, like there was a white dude from Southern California that in the streets he was a Southsider, right? And I wound up meeting him in college, but but on the streets he was a Southsider, and uh, from his neighborhood jumped in the whole nine yards, right? And he uh, he went to YA, and he went to YA and said he was a Southsider, right? And it's a white dude, so the politics is like, you know, whites and Southerners get along and Northerners and Blacks get along. This right, is obviously right. way yeah, like before the end of hostility shit, but just for folks watching, so you can kind of see the play. Um, what up, money back? I see you, homie. So uh, the, the dude goes to YA, he's like, hey, I'm a Southsider. The Southsiders pack him out. They stomp his ass out. He ain't oh. no fucking Southsider. You're a white guy. Shut the fuck up, right? What? So they dog him out. And he kind of tucks his tail. and's like, well, fuck it then. I guess I'm a wood. And oh, so shit. what the woods say? So, well, so he winds up running with them. And it's a trip because when I'm talking to him at Berkeley, right? And he's one of the co-founders of Underground Scholars. And so I, I was sitting chopping it up with them, just kind of picking his brain a little bit. And, and he was a convict, you know, he's a legit convict. Uh, and and I said, man, how was that for you? Because growing up in a brown community, growing up as a Southsider, kicking it with all the raza, blah, blah, blah. That must have been really hard for you 
to be around all these woods with all their racist rhetoric, right? And he's like, nah, bro, it wasn't hard at all. I adopted all that shit. I b- bought into the whole the whole white supremacist narrative. So he's saying shit. he bought into it or he just faked it? He, no, he bought into it. He's like, man, I, I bought into that shit for years until I kind of got my head right later in life. But uh, I jumped in. I was like, I didn't fuck it. I'm all for it. So, And for me, I was tripping like, man, that's kind of weird. Now, obviously, well, maybe not obviously, but to be clear, uh, I could have, I'm sure, gone into the county jail. Then I got busted in Cocoa County. And, and for those that are familiar with the Bay Area, Cocoa and, and incarceration, the Cocoa County Wood Car is is a is a respected, revered That's what Wes Watson, ain't you know, it? Pickwood car. Is that where Wes Watson's from? I don't think so. But I don't know Diego, what that dude. San Diego. Oh, yeah. okay, yeah. But so the Cocoa County Woods is a, is a known, respected wood car, right? And uh, and it's kind of two groups. You got the white guys from Contra Costa County, but the Cocoa County Woods is like a, you got to earn your way in, into that. And so uh, so <laughs> I suppose getting busted there, then I come in the county, there's a hell of white dudes in there, right? And I'm sure I could have come in and been like, you know, hey, I'm just, you know, I guess I'm a regular old white guy. Like I never done prison time before. I didn't have any gang tattoos or anything. So I probably could have just came in and been like, hey, you know, I'm I'm just me, right? Hi, my name's and the thought never crossed my mind, right? I never considered it. Uh, but I guess it's possible. And and a little did I know that at the time I talk about this uh in, in one of my videos, I think, but I want to do a video at some point in the future about my experience throughout prison, being around white dudes in prison, and honestly, how that impacted my view of white people, bro, for for quite a while, which seems odd, but it it really did. And I had to come home and consciously do some work to, to do, not like, you know, the white lady walking down the street type shit, but white males in particular. Um, I had to really do some work to kind of deprogram myself because I had a disdain for those dudes. And there was only the one altercation, so it's not like it was beating me up all the time. But but when I came through the county, I didn't know. But in San Quentin, the Northerners had just put a green light on the woods and they was giving them the business, right? Mm. And so uh, they're mad at the North, but they can't do nothing about it in Quentin but get beat up. But now here I am in their backyard. And I remember a dude came with, oh man, who's you? And I was like, man, you know, rascal, North Daniel. He was like, he was like, what? And I was on a bunk, right? There, bunks in the middle of the living area and cells all around the sides. So I was on a bunk. And I was like, rascal, North Daniel. You like, what? That's another white dude. He said, oh, okay. You know, and he's kind of cool, like a everyday Joe kind of guy. Wasn't, you know, swastikas on his forehead and shit. So he walks off, he's talking to some of the other white guys, and one of them fucking swastikas on the forehead type people comes over. He got the big war bird and shit on him. I don't know what none of that stuff means. But he comes over and he's like, hey man, what you say you are? I said, I'm a North Daniel. He goes, No, you ain't. And I took up on him, blip, because I could see in his body language. He was like, No, you ain't. Like, I was, that motherfucker was big. You ain't gonna hit me first. That's what's not gonna happen. 